How's it going, everybody? This is Dave Meltzer. We're going to be here for the next two hours talking pro wrestling, talking more about WrestleMania, which we talked about last night. we got Brian Alvarez here, and we're going to be taking your phone calls and your emails. We can also talk about anything else that you want to talk about, about uh, pro wrestling, myths, martial arts, or anything, any subject under the sun. We can even talk about bodybuilding. If, and you want to call up about that, but obviously we're going to mainly talk about WrestleMania and the current political climate. In fact, tonight is the big night because it is the first night where we will never see Nitro again on Monday night. It's really weird. Right. Can you hear me? You know what? It's it's it's. I think the fact that because last night was WrestleMania and it was such a long show, and then we did this afterwards, that I'm not really ready for two wrestling shows, so I'm not going to feel it this week. No. Other people may. Next, I'm, I'm going to feel the next fact week that it's not going to be on. I'm not going to. It's not going to be like wow. Where's that other two hours of wrestling that I'm supposed to watch tonight? Yeah, I think next week it's going to be where I miss it in its own weird way. Especially mm -hmm. trying to do, you know, trying to fill that space, you know. Having I miss Thunder in its own weird way. I, I didn't this week. Maybe I won't miss it. There was anything. something about no. Thunder where it was on a Wednesday and the newsletter was done and it was kind of a day where I could just sit back a little bit and Thunder was on and sometimes it was just, uh, it was so bad that it was funny and it was just, you know, something to do on a Wednesday night and now it is no longer there. Yeah. Um, well, we can talk more about, uh, you know, what's interesting is today is, uh, the response that I'm getting, a lot more favorable. I want to say more favorable because because all you know the top matches were very well received last night. But as far as like best match and everything, a lot of sentiment away from tables, ladders, and chairs, and towards Benoit and Kurt Angle. And I think it's one of those things where maybe people who think about it for an extra day, you know, kind of you know, like when it was over, when that show was over, I thought that tables, ladders, and chairs was the best match on the show. But when you think about it, it was kind of like. The tables, ladders, and chairs was the same tables, ladders, and chairs spots, whereas the Benoit angle was like, you know, something really different. So maybe yeah. that's what it is, and, and, and maybe people, especially if you're like a real hardcore fan, it's like, that's a style of wrestling that, you know, you might really like and you rarely get to see in this country. I was actually surprised, too, by the amount of feedback we got for the main event as the best match on the show. I thought that was kind of, I mean, it wasn't like it was a bad match or anything like that, but you had the tables, ladders, and chairs, and Benoit and angle, and just everyone just going, man, the, uh, Near Falls in the main event and everything like that was just so great. and It was the best match on the show, and I thought, wow, well, they did it. Well, the, the drama was really good. I mean, I thought it was I thought it was a hell of a match. I mean, the one thing about, you know, in, in, in comparing different matches and everything, it's like, you know, Benoit and Angle would have had the hardest time because they had the most limitations. I mean, basically, with the exception of the ref bump, which I think worked against them anyway, they had to do it with their two hands and their two feet and without a lot of props. The tables, ladders, and chairs was 100% props. And Austin and uh, Rock, I mean, they had the outside interference and they had the whole storyline thing going for them, plus being in the main event. So, you know, if you talk about the guys who had the best match with the uh, what's it, with the least help, that would be Benoit Angle. But I don't know that mm -hmm. it was the best match because, you know, that's one of the advantages of being in the main event. You know, is that you get you're allowed to break the tables, and that Rock Ang um, Rock and Austin, their table broke early anyway, so they didn't get to do that spot. What was happening there? It was like Rock was just laying on it and it collapsed or something. Yeah, that easily breakable what it table. Yeah, you broke like two minutes in. I was thinking like, well, that was obviously that was supposed to come on, come later in you know the show with like a, a rock bottom or something like that through a table that we don't get to see. Oh, uh, I don't know. Any, what are there any other uh, thoughts on the show that we didn't talk about last night? Because we pretty much covered it last night, I think. Yeah, we pretty much covered everything. I still haven't watched the uh, first three yet because you kind of uh, you warned me that. I really didn't miss too much, so I just figured I'd wait till after Ross and I and watch that. So uh, didn't see it yet, but I think we pretty much covered everything else. Have you heard about uh, what's on Ron Knight? Because I actually have not heard anything. I didn't get anything, no lineup or nothing. Okay, I haven't heard a lineup yet either. Um, I don't even know where they're going for the next pay per view. I mean, a lot of people seem to think it's Austin Undertaker. I don't, I don't think that's where they're going. But um, I mean, they maybe. I think it may be Austin and Rock again. But I guess tonight's show will probably at least set the stage of where they're going next. I got the impression that Angle and Benoit, everyone loved that match as far as uh, WWF higher-ups, so I think mm -hmm. they're going to be able to do a program. I, in fact, I know that they're talking about doing a 30-minute Iron Man match on the next pay-per-view. That's you know Maybe maybe they'll even talk about it on the show tonight. I don't know. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Uh, and when they came out that it was like, um, I guess, 9 o'clock Eastern. It was 6 o'clock over here, and I thought, man, this thing's going till, uh you know, it's going four hours. These guys are out here already. They're going to get like half hour, 45 minutes. I thought it was going to be one of those deals where, you know, just for the hell of it, they go, these guys are going to have a great match. It's just give them a bunch of time. And 
It was only about 15 minutes, but it was a hell of a 15 minutes, and I thought, you know, if they got like 45 minutes or something, or even a half hour, just especially with the reaction that they got for doing the wrestling and everything like that, that'd be a hell of a match. Yeah, probably. The, the one thing, I, you know, Benoit matches usually are better under 20 minutes, though. And, I, I, you know, it's like certain guys have better matches that go long, and certain guys have better matches that go short, and then other guys are, are in the middle. And Benoit's always been really a guy in the middle. Angle... Um, have we ever seen, what's the long, Angle, Angle's probably longest is probably about 25 minutes that we've seen. I think Angle and mm -hmm. Triple H went 25 minutes a couple months ago on pay-per-view. And that was a very good match, but it wasn't like, I don't remember it being off the charts or anything. Um, it's tough to go over 20 if you're not in the main event. Um, I guess Benoit, I the guess thing with that uh, match last night to me was, it was like it ended too early. It was like there was so much more that they could have done in that match. And I think that if they did a match where they did more of the mat wrestling there at the beginning and stretched out the uh, middle section and then did some more near falls at the end, they could go 30 minutes easy. Yeah, I'd love to see it. Um, those guys, they got great chemistry together. Uh, let's see. Uh, there is a press release from Tokyo Pop, which, of course, is the American licensee for FMW, and they are announcing that they are reviewing the recently announced purchase of WCW by the WF, citing possible violations of the Sherman Antitrust Act. Tokyo Pop fears that combining the nation's two largest wrestling leagues will impede competition and significantly reduce the number of options available to consumers. Well, it does significantly reduce the options available to consumers, but that's not so much by WWF as much as by the, by the television networks. You know? I mean, it, it, you, you know, WWF eliminated one... Actually, they... By buying, they eliminated one that was going to go out of business anyway, because once the TV network thing, of course, that whole, there's, I tell you, when I look back on this TV network thing, it's, it's very interesting, because the WWF entered into negotiations to buy WCW about three and a half weeks before they bought it. Now, the announcement by Jamie Kellner of canceling the TV time came after the WWF had already gone into negotiations again, and it was well known the WWF could not buy it, with that TV time. So there may be more to that TV cancellation than meets the eye. And there's a lot of things that were said to me that I wasn't thinking about at the time. But looking back, I'm starting to remember. And I, I can tell you that when the WWF went back to negotiate, uh, I don't know if it was Brad Siegel, but it was whoever was negotiating with Stuart Snyder of the World Wrestling Federation, told them point blank, and this is before the cancellation of the TV times uh, was, was, was made, that they would not be selling it to Fusion, even though Fusion didn't know they wouldn't be selling it until literally, you know, Tuesday. It was a Tuesday of last week when they finally couldn't get the TV time from from Fox. Mm -hmm. So, I think, I think there's more to this than meets the eye. Well, actually, if you look at the timeline, WWF started negotiating. What was it? Three and a half weeks before the purchase. Yes. And Kellner was in two weeks before the cancellation. So, it's right about the same time. Right about the same time. Maybe, maybe Kellner came in just a little bit later, it, 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 which if that's the case, that's that's pretty weird. Why would they enter negotiations? That was the whole reason that deal fell through the first time. The TV. So it may have been that, that, that WCW or that um, Time Warner did not want to sell it to Fusion because they thought that they weren't going to have the money to operate it and that it was going to be a big mess and they wanted no part of the mess. And they just wanted to sell it to WWF, figuring that there would be no mess with WWF. They would just sell it. And they were willing to give up the TV time to do so as a negotiating ploy of the WWF because it's the only way they could buy it. But why would they be worried if Fusion bought it if the TV was, I guess, the TV Because was they were going to be part know, owner. They were going to be part owners, and they would be partially responsible if Fusion couldn't pay the bills. Yeah, they were going to be 12% yeah. owners, remember? Yeah. So that maybe that's it. Anyway, Maybe. let me. I was just thinking about that. Uh, it's, I don't know. It's kind of an interesting thing there. Anyway, um, Tokyo Pops issues go beyond a concern for the industry as a whole to concern about the welfare of the individual wrestlers who will be affected by the merger, as well as the impending demise of ECW. FMW's relationship goes back several years with such veterans as Mick Foley, Terry Funk, and others who fought in Japan and are featured in Tokyo Pops DVD and VHS releases. I'm not sure what that has to do with anything. Uh, it's important to Tokyo Pop and FMW that the wrestlers be treated with the respect they deserve after their long years of service and not become victims of another mega merger downsizing. Um, as a small company, uh, FMW and Tokyo Pop have no illusions about taking Vince McMahon and his empire to court. David will never beat Goliath in a lawsuit. He beat him with a rock to the head, said 
uh, somebody in there. She, she got to Sui Tachi, the interim wrestling ambassador. Is it like Steve Regal? Um, oh, this is ridiculous. Now they start talking about a hardcore death match between the two leagues. Okay, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty stupid there. That'll solve the problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A hardcore match, that's just wonderful. Uh, let's see. Um, any other news to get to? There's like, I mean, literally, there's like no news in wrestling. I mean, except for the fact that we just had Mania and we just the biggest, we're in the middle of the biggest news story. Um, I think that the, that, uh, boy, none of the WCW and guys. As far as American wrestling, when there's not a WWF story, there will be no news. I know. That's about it. That's about right. The, um, so yeah, um, uh, what's it? Uh, EMLL had their pay-per-view. Perro Aguayo ended up going out on a stretcher in his final match, which is not a way to end your career. So I've got a feeling that he's probably coming back. He got his head shaved um, against Universo Dos Mil. Uh, what happened, uh, it, it was the, the dreaded uh, Martinet, a tombstone pile driver, uh, with a lot of distraction and everything like that. And, and Aguayo was knocked unconscious since they sell that move, you know, huge over in Mexico. Like it's and death. It's it, next to death, that's right. So he's out, and then they shaved his head and took him out on a stretcher, and that was supposed to be contractually his last match in Mexico City. And, you know, it's amazing because there were, that was a great finish. And the reason I say that is because everybody was so sick of Pero Aguayo's retirement tour, although they did sell out <laughs> on Friday night. And and now it's like all those people were sick of it. They really want him to come back for revenge because nobody wants this guy after 31 years in the ring for his last appearance, you know, at, at the number one arena in Mexico to be, you know, stretchered out with his head shaved. I, mean, I don't so mind. It's, what? I don't mind. Uh, yeah, well, I, I could I could live without seeing him. He's really declined a lot in the last couple of years. Um, hopefully, I, 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 from my, when I gathered, the pay-per-view there was pretty good. So, um, And All Japan um, taped their first television show also yesterday. And that'll air on fr in a Friday night time slot on uh, Nippon TV. So, um, not All Japan, Pro Wrestling Noah. All Japan? Okay. No, Pro Wrestling Noah. I, mean, I, would, I was mistaken there. Um, and um, I've been watching some of their tapes, and um, they got a good company. I mean, when they get TV, some of those younger guys with exposure, um, you know, Marafuji's really good. Um, Morishima's got some promise. Sugiura, Takashi Sugiura is really good. I mean, um, for a guy who's what's probably been in about three, four months, I think he debuted December. So, yeah, like four months in. Um, he's going to be really good. He's, um, I don't want to say he's another Kurt Angle because that's unfair because we'll probably never see another one quite like that. But, but, uh, that is the one who they compare him to over there, you know, because of the amateur background and, uh, small guy with great suplexes. And, um, I mean, already, already like a good worker. So, so, um, I, I, you know, they're, it's tough. It's a tough market. They're, they're in a big recession too. So, um, we'll see. Uh, let's see what other stuff. Any other stuff to go through? Who's training everybody over there? Um, I, I'm, I guess just uh, the same. You know, Misawa, Akiyama, all of them. You know, mm -hmm. they they do a good job. They've 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 turned out some great great talent. But you know, they teach them. You know, they teach them that way. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. practice, 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 and and you know they they teach them a lot of respect for the profession. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Start with uh, Dave Galvin, who goes, I must admit there were only two things I didn't care for about WrestleMania last night. One was the ending of Benoit Angle. Yeah, I thought that was all right. I can't help but feel Benoit should have gotten the win. And he will. Don't worry. Uh, two was the fact that there should have been more of a WCW presence to show. Actually, I think there should have been no WCW presence to show based on how they handled it. I thought Especially that was the way mistake. they did it, yeah. I thought that was a big mistake. Seeing the lame ten or so wrestlers in the cheap seats did nothing to wet my, pro my mouth for the product. Yeah, I think it was totally counterproductive. The deal they is... They were kind of stuck, though, if they wanted to put anybody on the show, because it's like, if you put those guys in the front row, everybody's going to expect somebody to jump the rail. And, of course, you don't want them to do that. But, you know, otherwise you put them up in the cheap seats, and it looks like they're just a bunch of geeks. Yeah, but, I mean, they didn't even have, like, a, you know, like, a, a you know, like, saying who they were. I mean, you saw these guys, and it's like, you know, you sort of, oh, there's Lance Storm, oh, there's Sean Stasiak. Yeah, and, and, and there and were, the and, you know, WCW they're... wrestlers written underneath them. Yeah, and and that they were you know no and there was no star power there, yeah. Which to me is really, that's really going to be tough on this interpromotional thing because if they don't have the stars, I mean, you know, you can you can build some of those guys against WWF and have dream matches, but but not any of the guys that that they signed. Not of the, the twenty four guys they signed, you know, there's none of them. I mean, you know, Mike Awesome was bigger when he was in ECW. I mean, WCW mm -hmm. took him down a notch. So and there's no big money in right now. 
in Mike Awesome against you know The Rock. I mean, and I don't know that there, I don't know that there will be. I mean, you know, I mean he's all right, but anyway, let's see. Uh, I couldn't help but want to see Flair or Booker T come out and at least cut a two minute promo. Yeah, it's you know what though that would be too soon. And yeah. Flair, who who knows? You know, you know, one thing I want to mention. We talked about this a little bit on Friday, um, and that is, you know, these guys that we talk about. I mean, nobody has been. There's a lot of rumors about what guys are going to be offered as it comes to a buyout, and uh, what guys are going to be offered by WWF. And ultimately, you know, the guys are going to make their decision based on those two offers. You know, if they can make, you know, more money, enough more money by going to WWF. If they make less money and have to go on the road work and take bumps, um, that's kind of a bad deal. And and that may be how it turns out, but nobody knows because no one's been offered buyouts and no one's none of those guys have been offered you know have, been, have really been talked with about WWF. WWF has not done a lot of work on this because they had to get ready for uh, WrestleMania, and in the next two weeks they're really going to start working on this WCW project. You know they aside from the 23 or 24 guys that they've signed, um, there's nothing else that's really official. I mean there's, they have not signed any writers. They have not even really discussed it. Uh, referees, they need, they need a front office, um, mm -hmm. production crew. I mean, I think they're going to use a lot of the WF production crew an extra day on the Wednesdays. Um, uh, you know, but, one thing a lot of the uh, upper card wrestlers or the uh, high dollar guys need to think about is how much longer they have on their current WCW deal. Because if it's a guy like Goldberg that wants to do something in this business someday and he's got like three years left, three years is a hell of a lot of time in wrestling. And if it's a guy maybe like, um, I don't even know how long Paige has left, but say he has 10 months left, he can sit that 10 months out, and in 10 months people are still going to remember him. But uh, I think it's all going to depend on how long it's going to be. Three years is so long. Look at three years ago in wrestling. What was it, 97 or 98? It's like an eternity. Yeah, but the longer you're out, the more your myth grows. I mean, look at like when a guy like Warrior or Sid Vicious or those guys are gone forever. When they come back, people forget just how horrible they really were. Yeah, but there's and a certain Goldberg amount of time where, where the, there's such a turnover in the audience that it doesn't really mean anything. The Go Goldberg's got a name, though. I think, yeah. You know, and, and plus, you got to remember three years from now, there may be, I mean, you don't know what the state of the business will be. They may be begging for a guy to come in and draw some money. And mm -hmm. and the fact that he once did, you know how that goes. Like when, when that's when that's how Sid keeps getting his jobs. Is that, you know, some, some companies. Sid's another one that'll be back. I don't know about Sid being back. I, not, 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 I don't think that Sid's going to go to the WF ever. You know, for one, he's old. He's got, he's coming back from a broken leg, and and he did not leave there on very good terms. And, you know, we talk about, you know, certain guys. You know, like the, the leopards don't change their spots very often. Sometimes they do. Sometimes people do grow up. But Sid, you know, I mean, what was it? Sid like walked out on that, uh, you know, after the the Starcade pay per view, he walked out. Because he didn't like what he was doing on TV or something, right? Mm -hmm. Then he came back, they kissed his ass, and put him in the main event on the next pay-per-view. And it's like that's granted that really speaks volumes for that company and why that company went out of business. But you yeah, know, the fact that coming gone from WWF though. Yeah, but I think the last one was the last one. I mean, because you got to remember, it's, this is a different WWF now. That WWF from before was 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 very much like WCW, where they acquiesced to star power. I mean, can Shawn Michaels is the perfect example. I mean, Shawn did all that stuff that he's doing now. Years ago, and you know, they just kissed his ass. You know what I mean? Kept bringing him back because he was a star. Now, you know, they, they don't even give him a second thought. It's like they don't need him. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, I don't see them. You know, Sean's got a lot more of an upside and a lot more of a name than Sid Vicious. I just don't see. Again, if business gets really terrible, of course, of course, they'll get desperate and try to get him. But I really believe that. Um, I, don't, I don't know what I don't know what he could do in this business anymore. Um, I mean, because the independents. You know, are not not a major factor. I'm sure, I'm sure he'll get a job with when somebody wants to start something up. You know, and, and lose a lot of money that you know, like signs like the Kevin Nashes and all these guys. If that ever happens, that Sid will be one of the first people they call. But as far as WWF, I I don't I don't see it in this. You know, unless things drastically change in the business. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. It goes. I can't help but believe Stone Cold turning heel. Is the best thing they could have done. While it was obvious the Texas crowd didn't want to believe or recognize the turn, I think JR and Paul did a great job on the announcing. One of the guys sitting next to me uh, at the party I was at said, I can't believe that SOB sold out, proving to me it was a successful turn. <laughs> you, 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 we don't know. You know, I mean, like, the Goldberg. I think we talked about it yesterday. The people at home, 
are going to go for it a lot easier than the people in Texas, just because he had Ross and Heyman. Ross was working so hard last night to get that heel turn over. I mean, throughout the whole match, before everything even happened, it was like every time Austin would do something, Ross, he wouldn't really, you know, bury him or anything like that, but he'd make comments like, I can't believe that Austin's doing this, you know, that sort of thing. So I think it'll work. Not tonight. No, no, no. I mean, you, you, know, you, you, don't, you don't know. I mean, I know that last night there was a lot of concern because of, you know, it was like three years, four years now. Well, it's been four years since WrestleMania 97, right, when the big turn yeah. was made. So for, for four years, he's the guy who built the company, you know, from a very, un, you know, relatively minorly successful, even unsuccessful financially company to what it is today. Um, you know, the last couple of years he's had help, but, but the, big, you know, the big turnaround was largely on the back of Steve Austin. And a lot of people came into wrestling with Steve Austin as their, you know, idol. And, you know, there's, like with Bill Goldberg, with Ric Flair, you know, sometimes these turns, even when the guy's good at it, you, you, you run that risk of, do I want to pay 40 bucks to boo this guy who I like? You don't know. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, it's like, it's like they're real good, and they're obviously better than WCW, but, I mean, like, Ric Flair is a really good heel, but every time Ric Flair turned heel, it was a financial disaster for the company because people didn't want to pay money to boo Ric Flair. You know, it was really all there was to it. It was the best WrestleMania I ever saw. WrestleMania's more... I'm trying to look back and think about this. More often than not, they're disappointments. Some of them have been really good. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, this this one was probably... Uh, had the highest expectations going in as far as a whole card. I think the, the one... I, I mean, I know as a fan, um, the WrestleMania where Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels did the 60-minute match, the day before, a couple days before, for that match, I had really high expectations. I thought it was going to be one of the greatest matches I would ever see, and I don't think it was. Uh, but it was a, it was an excellent match, but it was not quite that good. Um, I didn't have that feeling for any of the matches on this show, but as a show overall, I mean, I expected you know far better than that night in L.A. So uh, this is there's just always that. so much expectation going into every WrestleMania because they hype it up forever, and it's like everyone expects it to be the show of the year. And it's one of those things where even if every year it wasn't the show of the year, just because it's WrestleMania, people would expect it to be. And this year they delivered, yeah. top to bottom. This is this is, for the uh, most part. For the most part. For the most part. I just got back from Houston. I traveled to, from Boston. A uh, few thoughts personally. It was the greatest wrestling fans weekend. The fan festival was awesome. I got to ride two roller coasters with Foley at Six Flags. On to WrestleMania. It was the, by far the greatest <laughs> WF pay-per-view ever. The crowd was so intense. The entire show was just unbelievable. Uh, it was the, by far the biggest wrestling crowd I've ever been to. The deal with Austin was not working at all live. People were popping huge for Austin. Even after the show was over, when The Rock walked off, uh, by himself, he got booed out of the building. This is a wow. another person who saw it differently. He goes, I just want to give you a live perspective. Uh, Booker T was there, Hugh Morris, Mark Jindrick, Sean O'Hare. Uh, there were some Austin chants near me, but the crowd was 50-50. Nah, no way that crowd was 50-50. I, I Wait a second, that. Booker T was there? That's what it says. Why wouldn't they put Booker T on TV, of all people? I didn't see Booker T, but uh, I, I, was, I, I was expecting that he was going to be there, and they never showed him on TV. Uh, let's see, um, let's see, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty much all it says, but that crowd was not 50-50. I mean, at, never when, at least when the show was on. Uh, is there any chance of getting Scott Hudson on your show? Uh, yes, there's a chance. Um, good chance, even. Uh, let's see, I thought WrestleMania was great. It probably would have been the best pay-per-view I ever saw, if not for a very subpar match from Jericho and Regal. It's not that it was bad, but they could have done so much more than they did. They tried to work psychology into it, and it was too short, so it seemed worthless. Otherwise, four three-star matches, Benoit Angle, Tables, Liars, and Chairs, Helms, The Undertaker, and Austin Rock made for an incredible show. One thing I want to mention I thought you might know, but I'm very disappointed by a facet of the security forces sign policy during the Hunter Hearst, Helms, The Undertaker match. I saw three different signs that said so-and-so is gay, Two of them were Triple H, and one was, I don't know who else. Now, I'm not going to get an ethical debate about homosexuality, and being one myself, I'm sure I picked up on it when others might not have, but it seemed to me having such derogatory signs in plain view of the camera for 30 seconds combined would be something they would try to avoid. I'm sure a lot of the homophobia it portrayed is prevalent among a lot of W fans, but still, why allow them to tick off many viewers who did notice and were offended? It seems like an unnecessary risk to me. Okay, um... It's just, um, I don't know, signs like that are a part of the wrestling mentality. It's not one of the uh, good parts of the wrestling mentality. They are not all Did he say parts. they were confiscated? No, he said they were not. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, this is Ways to Make Austin Be Heal. It's from Jamal Alam. 
Sure, it'll ruin his marriage, but have Deborah cheat with someone else. Marriages are meant to be broken up in pro wrestling anyway. Have Austin injure Foley on Raw. A lot of people have suggested that one, by the way. Have Austin attack Foley because the fans love Foley. I'm expecting Tuesday night at SmackDown that, that Austin beats up uh, JR, you know, in Oklahoma City. I, I don't. No one's told me that. I just see that one coming. Have him dress you up know, the problem suit. with Austin is through his whole babyface career, he always stuns the good guys and he always gets the big pop. So, you know, he stuns Foley right now. Great. He's been stunning people forever. Yeah, and he's done, he's done Foley as a babyface many times. Yeah. And he's done Ross as a babyface, you know, many times. Or not many times, but he did it. Um, let's see. Have him dress up in a suit and drink champagne with William Regal. That would be funny. Have him grow his hair back and become stunning Steve Austin. I don't think he can, I don't think he can do that anymore. Uh, call Vince Russo and Eric Bischoff and ask them for how to get Goldberg over as a heel notebook. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, what do you think about Shane doing RVD's move? Slap in the face by Shane, Vince, or Paul E? Uh, some of them. Where was Chris Jericho born, in New York or Canada? Wasn't he born in New York, Chris Jericho? His father yeah, played for the wrong guy. I think he was born in New York, but I'm not sure. Who trained Kevin Nash? Who did? Was he trained at Power Plant? I don't think so. Well, maybe, actually. I mean, he was trained I don't in, think in, so. He was trained in Atlanta, though. I mean, he was a bouncer at the strip club, and, you know, all those guys saw him, the giant bouncer, and they talked to him and doing pro wrestling. I mean, he was trained in Atlanta. I don't, I don't know. I should know that, too. Uh, let's see. What was your view on the gimmick? Nobody wants Royal? to take credit. <laughs> WCW on Saturday night is a good slot for me because I used to watch WCW Worldwide for the comedy of Hudson and Tanay and ECW Hardcore, so now I can watch WCW instead. It says, why didn't Booker T show up at Mania? Maybe he did. Hey, was Booker T there? We got one letter saying that he was. Uh, can you talk about Iron Sheik's condition? You talk about him not being able to take bumps. What are the exact reasons besides that he's really old? I think his knees are shot. I think his body is shot. Um, why the huge gut? I just think he's just shot. He eats a lot. You know, the thing with him, though, is, is, you know, he had the huge gut even when he trained. I think it's just some weird genetic thing. Uh -huh. Although, you know, when when um, when Iron Sheik started pro wrestling, and he was, like, old already. I mean, he didn't start at a young age because he's, he's um, 63 now. And he would have started, let me see, he would have started around 72 because he started around the same time as Flair. So that's 29 years ago, which means he would have been 34 when he started, which is not young to start. Which is actually quite amazing that he started at 34 and had such a good career. But um, he he had a totally flat stomach. He had, like, the best abs in the business, practically, at that time. And he was, like, you know, about a 190-pound guy. And then he just got, you know, like he was pregnant. And, like, last night, I mean, I was ready for him to give birth. Uh, let's see. Did you notice the huge negative reaction to Shane when he mentioned the WCW guys? Everyone did. Uh, this doesn't bode well for the new show, does it? Uh, a lot of things do not, no. It's too bad Vince doesn't want to upset his salary structure and bring in the guys that would get WCW over. At this rate, the biggest star is going to be the owner. Uh, yeah, you know what? The biggest star is going to be the owner. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. I was saddened to hear the reaction some of the participants in the gimmick battle royal got from the crowd. Some of these superstars were big superstars in their time, yet most of the new fans have no idea what they were, who they were. How would they? Why is that sad, though? Because they never talk about history. Why? You know, why yeah. would it be sad? Some of the wrestlers were involved as little as eight years ago. You know, a lot of the fans, let's, let's face it, the WWF was doing, you know, two ratings um, in 1997, 96, 97, which is four years ago. And now they're doing, you know, fives, and at one time they were doing, you know, high sixes and occasional seven. Um, so the vast majority of fans were not fans four years ago, let alone eight years ago. Uh, I wish that the new fans would pay attention to the past and legends like they do in other sports. I, I, I agree. Yeah, but, but how do they do that, though? There's no, you know, unless you go you know, back it, and find a bunch of really old videos. That, I don't even know if you can get them at the video store. You're not oh, going to get it from the WWF. You're not going to go to the bookstore and find, you know, a WWF book on the history of the Federation or anything like that. Well, the other thing, too, is, is like in WWF commentary, except last night they did mention some old names as it fit into the storyline, but in, in, when you listen to a baseball game, you know, they'll talk about your your stars of other generations, you know, like, freely. So, you you know, like, if you live in San Francisco, you know, all of the stars in the history of the Giants in San Francisco, you know, going back to the 50s, are talked about during the season if you listen to the game or watch the games on television. Um, they pay homage to their, you know, that's one of the things baseball has going for it. And football, you know, they, they have all the films and everything like that, basketball. You know, they do that. Wrestling, you know, has, has killed its history. 
because the guy who owns it wants to rewrite it to his own needs. And, um, you know, so whatever. Um, you know, a lot yeah, just an example, yeah. we were talking about Dory Funk Jr. last night. How is any fan that just started watching in 97 supposed to know who Dory Funk Jr. is? How are they supposed to get footage of him? You know, it's not going to be in a WWE magazine or anything like that, or they're not going to show footage of superstars or anything. There's nothing they can do. Or Jack Briscoe when they were talking, comparing him to Kurt Angle. Who's going to know Jack Briscoe today? I mean, yeah, if he showed up, everyone would just go, who's that guy? Is it for certain SummerSlam will be in San Jose? Yes. Will you be attending if this is the case? Uh, that is a good question. Um, it, if we're doing a show right afterwards, like we did last night, I probably won't be attending. Our, but as, as if, if we don't, then I, I'm sure I will. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. There's an article on WF.com about the gimmick battle royal. It says the reason that one man gang was not Akeem was because he could not fit into the Akeem costume because of all of the weight he's lost. <laughs> I didn't know that. Oh, he actually yeah. was pretty trim. Some of those guys, even like uh, John Tenta looked really Tenta's trim. Tenta's lost a lot of weight. Trim for yeah. Tenta. Yeah. I'm not surprised, but sad in the Goon looked like a over. fan. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, really. Um, da, 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 da. Would you rate any match from WrestleMania 17 better than either Owen Brett or Heartbreak Kid Razor Ramon from WrestleMania 10? Uh, no, I don't think I would. I would rate both of those matches better than anything on uh, on the last night's show. Would you? No. Okay. Uh, it's from Ryan. Do you know Portland Wrestling is ever going to be putting on any more shows, and are you going to work there? I don't. I don't think they're doing any shows in the near future. And actually, I haven't even heard anything from Portland Wrestling, so probably not. Uh, let's see. Where was Pete Rose? I guess they just didn't sign him. I guess they just figured that uh, they had other things to do. That, that the tradition has gone long enough, and there's just nothing new to do. Uh, let's see. Uh, everybody seems to be saying WrestleMania was one of the best pay-per-views ever, and it was awesome. But what I don't think is why nobody ever talks about ECW Heat Wave 98. From top to bottom, it was one of the greatest pay-per-views ever. That was a hell of a show. That was. Uh, do you know what role Michaels was supposed to have at Mania? Do you know, Brian? I don't, you know, I don't know. I, don't I have know. no idea. Um, uh, let's see. Isn't it ironic that they ignore Bret Hart in the WWF? I mean, last night's main event was had Bret Hart <laughs> written all over it. Oh, God, I know. All those false finishes from the Bret Hart Steve Austin matches. And oh, the, I know, from the, 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 the uh, Survivor Series finish. Pushing off the Survivor turnbuckles Series. in the Million Dollar Dream. Yeah. And the so. uh, the WrestleMania deal with him and the sharpshooter. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's like the big vivid image they were playing off of, yeah. And they never mentioned It's kind of strange you're trying to turn Austin heel, do that spot again. Yeah. Um, Al, who's the first, who's the first caller? Because I cannot read that. Oh, Ray. Okay, Ray from New York is up first. Hey, hey Ray, guys. what's going on? Uh, hi. Uh, hey, this Ray. Is, this is Razor up in New York. Uh, just uh, wanted to ask you a few things. Um, first off, what the hell happened to the Gooker's outfit? In what sense? I, wasn't, I guess I wasn't paying close enough attention. Maybe he lost too much weight to fit in, too. <laughs> the, the Gooker had no feathers left, man. The, the, well, they, the, they probably built the outfit about ten years ago, and maybe those... Feathers just kind of fell off. Yeah, but, well, he had the thing one. If it weren't for the Iron Sheik being too out of shape to go over the top rope, I think the Gooker should have had that one. I think, I think they, they actually kept go... that Gooker costume for ten years. Really? I'm shocked. I, I mean, I'm shocked. You would think that, like, if it, I, I think probably he was Hector burned, Guerrero. Vince himself would have burned it that night. I know. <laughs> I, everyone forgets that that gimmick was like, I mean, I guess maybe they don't forget, but that gimmick was like the flop of all flops. Oh, I know. <laughs> That was like that was like the WWF equivalent to Oz. Well, yeah, okay. I, I don't I don't remember Oz because I've always been pretty anti WCW, but uh, that was Kevin Nash's uh, one of his first gimmicks. Oh no, he came out as the gr the great and powerful Oz, and everybody booed like crazy. And uh, then it was up time for a new gimmick, and I think he yeah, was, uh, no, I, I I've seen Oz. It's just it's just that's one of the reasons why I never watched WCW was because of that. I remember it, in other words. <laughs> <laughs> so. But, um, well, aside of the Gooker being robbed out of his Rumble win or Battle Royal win or whatever they're calling it, um, my only other question was this, is um, why do you think that um, Vince McMahon, and maybe you answered this, I just tuned in about 15 minutes ago, but why do you think uh, the booking committee or whoever chose to try to turn Austin heel as opposed to The Rock? Because I could see The Rock um, getting over the heel a lot easier. I think they just thought it was time after four years. It's kind of that mentality in wrestling that that you you know four years is so long that you have to make a turn. Mm -hmm. 
And whether it's, it was the right one or not, I think that the feeling was, for most of last year, that rock was so popular that the, 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 th the thing to do is to turn Austin. And then it really was only in the last few weeks where it looked like maybe that was the wrong decision, but the battle, you know, the plan had already been laid out by then, so they just decided that, you know, we're going to go with our plan, and we're just going to do it our way. But don't get me wrong. I mean, uh, I'm usually one of the guys who likes to watch the heels beat up on the faces. So um, seeing Austin as a heel was definitely refreshing last night. I thought it was great. But um, I just kind of thought that since The Rock got booed so much earlier on, you know, it'd be easier to do it with him. But you're right. I guess it was time for the change, you know? I think Rock's whole character is going to make it easier for him to get over as a heel than Austin. Right. Yeah, well, they, they started to change that. I mean, you know, you noticed, like, on that SmackDown show, I think it was, or The Raw, I forget which one. But, I mean, with that guy, I mean, I saw those subtle changes in the last week in The Rock's character. I mean, they they knew why people were booing him outside of Texas, and uh, they worked to change it. You know, in the last week on the TV, they were getting 50-50 reactions, as opposed to the week before where, you know, there were the die, Rocky, die signs that they had to confiscate at the buildings. <laughs> hey, did you get that uh, whole package of WWE sent out with, like, the DVD and everything like that? Did I? Was, like, did. biographies of everybody? Yes, I did. The biography of The Rock, I was just glancing over it, and they actually acknowledged the Die, Rocky, Die chance. I thought that was so strange in a press release about this guy's, you know, his career. It's like they're talking well, about his debut, and fans didn't, you know, they didn't go for him, and they chanted Die, Rocky, Die, so yeah, we had to he, tweak the character a little bit. You know what was funny about that, though? That's another sort of rewriting of history, in that the fans initially, I mean, I remember his first match, they chanted his name at, at the Garden. And, I mean, they mm -hmm. went for him. What, what, what killed him? They were just being pushed down their throat. What killed him was when he won the Intercontinental title from Hunter because people thought he wasn't ready. And then it was that Eric Watts thing where it was like, okay, they're shoving this guy down our throat. He's clearly not ready. And that's why the people turned on him. I mean, if they had, mm -hmm. if they had not overpushed him, I don't know that the people would have turned on him. And, and actually, he probably wouldn't have gotten as far as he did. You know, one thing that was really funny, and it also goes to show about, um, I don't know, it's about the, uh, the uh, was it the Slammies or whatever, or the credibility of the Slammies? The first year that Rock, Rock and Austin started in the WWF the same year, and they had like a poll in the Slammies for the best newcomer. And Austin, you know, was over, I mean, he didn't get over the first six months, but after that, he was over like crazy. And The Rock yeah. won the poll, and I saw that, and it was, and Rock was, you know, this was before the fans had turned completely on Rock, but they were starting to a little bit. But I mean, clearly, he was at one level, and Austin was about seven levels ahead, and I'm just thinking like, <laughs> yeah, the fans voted for Rock over Austin for, you know, the best newcomer this year, sure. Um, before I got the phone, there was one other thing that was on my mind. I'm not sure if you'd have any information on this, but uh, do you think Shawn Michaels is uh, pretty much done now? I mean, he screwed up his chance, it sounds like. I don't, I wasn't there. It sounds, it sounds like that he's done, yeah. I mean, yeah. like, for, for a while anyway. I mean, he'll, he'll probably, just because, he'll probably get another shot at some point, but it's probably going to be a long way down the road. And I mean, just look at it this way. He cut that promo on Bite This, and they took him off TV for almost a year. Yeah. And this was not cutting a promo. This was uh, other problems. So. Well, well, the thing is, is, is I don't get smacked on anymore because uh, the idiots at UPN let Warner Brothers buy him out, so I just get to watch Raw. I don't know what goes on at SmackDown or anything anymore. So uh, I just heard he kind of stormed out of the tapings or something, but I wasn't sure if he stormed out or if he showed up stoned or something. I don't know what's going on. I didn't know if you guys... Well, he never appeared on TV, so when he got to the building, they sent him home. Okay. Well, hey, uh, thanks a lot for your time, and uh, I'll talk to you later. This is from Steve, who says, To say this WrestleMania was by far better than either Mania is absurd. This year's Mania had five gimmick matches, tables, ladders, and chairs, Battle Royal, the main event was no DQ with tons of interference, and the hardcore match. It's really sad you can't put over a main event with just the top stars putting on a wrestling match. You know, they could have, actually, but they didn't. But they could have. Uh, WrestleMania 3, 5, 6, and 10 were far better. Okay, 3, the main event of WrestleMania 3 was one of the worst matches in the history of wrestling. Um, it had one great match, Savage and Steamboat, awesome match. Um, and it was a good show, um, but it was not anywhere anywhere close to the caliber of this show. WrestleMania 5 was a terrible show. Uh, six, well, six, six was uh, Toronto Skydome, right? Yes, yeah, that was a good show. Hogan, yeah, Hogan and Warrior. That was a good show. It wasn't anything close to this show. And ten had two phenomenal matches, better than anything on this show. But this show had a much better undercard. Uh, let's see, had more good matches too. Uh, let's see, this is um, from Larry who goes. I just tuned in. I was hoping to see Shawn Michaels. When are we going to see him? Probably Don't not, hold your not breath. for a long, yeah, not for a long, long time. 
Sean blew his chance. Uh, let's see. The reason that they didn't name any WCW wrestlers and that none of the major stars were there with the WF was afraid they might get some heat which would detract from the show. Uh, they can name them on commentary. Yeah, if they were way up there, it wasn't going to, you know, they, they did, it is true they did not want people like chanting for any wrestler or anything, or anything like that. They really, they, they, there were a lot of people who did not want any WCW guys on the show, and then others felt that they had to be there because the fans were expecting it. So that was the compromise they worked out, which, quite frankly, was, I think, What a was, compromise, was, though. It, it, if it you're expecting have, WCW guys on the show, I'm sure what you're expecting is, you know, Booker T coming to the ring with Shane McMahon. Not these guys just appearing on TV in the cheap seats. Unidentified, yeah, added no, nothing to the show, and took away from those guys. Yeah, and took away from the whole interpromotional feud because now it seems just so low rent. You yeah. I mean? uh, what do you think about Jeff Bagwell saying these guys are great actors at WrestleMania? I, I would consider that a compliment. Uh, let's see. How old is the Iron Sheik? He is 63. Did he win a gold medal in the Olympics? <laughs> no, he was never in the Olympics. <laughs> That's uh, one of wrestling's great legends. Uh, this is from uh, Gene Okerlund. I think st still thinks he was in the Olympics. Remember he brought that up? Or maybe oh, Gene yeah, was just yeah. being facetious. I think Gene may have just been. Yeah. Is the payout the wrestlers receive at WrestleMania flat amount up front or percentage of the gate and pay per view buys? I'm guessing, not knowing for sure, that the guys in the Battle Royal probably were just got like a flat fee, you know. But uh, most of the wrestlers will get a percentage of the gate and the pay per view buys, except for the guys in that uh, heat match, which will only get a percentage of the uh, the live gate, not a percentage of the pay per view. From Dan, who goes, I thought the main event was awesome. My friends, me and my friends have not popped from your falls like that in a long time. I was jumping out of my seats for each one. I love the heel turn. It's shot in the arm the WF needs. Austin's been a face for four years. It's time for a change. I think that the turn has already been moderately successful. The people were talking about wrestling at my school for the first time in months. Hmm. Imagine the wonderment of WCW wrestlers looking over a crowd of 65,000 people, the total some amount of their house shows for the past year. It's true. <laughs> um, let, let's see. WCW did about, let's say they did about 100 house shows and averaged 3,000 people. So they did about 300,000 people for the year. Let's, but but it's that, that's actually, oh, the thing is, you know, it was not that many years ago, three to be exact, that uh, WCW put 40,000 in the Georgia Dome, which isn't 65, but it's a hell of a lot of people. Not all that for long a ago. Nitro. That for Nitro. For Nitro, not even for, not, not for WrestleMania, exactly. And look and at how many times can... Raw has gone to the Georgia. I guess Raw isn't based in Georgia, but look at how many times they've gone to the George Dome. And but that doesn't matter. Not even they, they, close they... to that. Yeah, even, yeah, they usually do 22 to uh, about 26,000. That's right. I don't think they've ever. They, I think the first time they went, did they do 30 the first time? I think they did like about 20. Maybe it was a little under 30. Yeah, it was close. So were, yeah, Ross kept saying 30,000, 30,000, and maybe the real number was like 26 or 27. So yeah, they never did. They never did 40, which w, WCW. Did a little over 40 for the first one, and then that one, the one finger touch one was like about 35 to 38. So they did a big one there, and then of course that one finger touch. It's all downhill from there. Yeah, that was that was a dumb move, and boy, I, re I remember that night going, you know, you're going to come back here and you're not going to be able to sell tickets, and uh, that's kind of what happened. Uh, let's see, it's got somebody goes, I thought WrestleMania was great, but the stupid ending of the main event and the waste of time of the women's title match. Uh, last night when Saturn came out with Eddie Guerrero, it looked like so much like Hulk Hogan, it was scary. Mm, I don't think he looked like Hulk Hogan. I thought it was Bagwell when I saw the top hat. Yeah, I know. Uh, Bagwell with a, I know. What will be the main event of Backlash? I don't know. We'll probably find out tonight. Uh, at this point, what will you do with Jericho? Turn him heel? Why hasn't the WF had any more page or pay-per-views in England? Because they do pay-per-view, they do British-only pay-per-views anyway. Um, not to say that they won't at some time, they may. Were they teasing the beginning of an Undertaker retirement last night? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, let's see. He won. Yeah. Let's go, let's go on the calls. Let's start with, uh, Matt in New Orleans. Matt, what's going on? Hey, how's it going, Dave? Brian? Hey. It's going really good. Um, just, you just brought up China, and I just want to say that, um, I think her ego is going to be absolutely out of control in the WWF, and I think last night, the way she treated Ivory, was so disrespectful that it made me sick. It wasn't even I Ivory. It was it was Ivory and everything that they set up for her for this match. The neck the injury, neck injury she, you know, the big like, comeback. It's like, it's like I'm not selling. It's like I'm not selling. I, she didn't sell the match and she didn't sell her injury. Mm hmm Yeah. Um, and that that just uh, so when I, when I was listening to your show last night and you commented on that, uh, I don't know. It just made me sick to watch. As uh, I mean uh. I'm an independent worker down here, just like uh, Brian is up there. So, um, you know, I'm real conscious about how um, when you go over on somebody, you 
you do it in a respectful way, not to kill them. And just the way she laid across her, that really, uh, that pissed me off more than anything on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought I thought the show overall was really great, though. Um, it just lacks the one really standout match that puts it out. Like WrestleMania 10 had the two standout matches that were uh, uh, that I made it stand out in everyone's mind. I thought there were three standout matches. I mean, there wasn't there wasn't a match, you know, like a Bret Hart Owen Hart match or that ladder match. But I, I meant like a match of the year candidate. I thought that the TLC was pretty close, and I thought that you know, they're, they're, they, I mean, they're, you know, Austin Rock was was pretty darn good too. I mean, but you're right. I mean, as far as like. The match of the year, I don't think we saw it last night. I don't think, I think the Benoit Jericho ladder match was probably better than anything on the show last night. Agreed. Benoit Jericho, uh, that was here in New Orleans, and uh, I watched it on TV, but coming into work the next day, I had several people there, and really they talked about that uh, more than anything else. So uh, that match was over huge live, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. I, I thought that was the best match of the year in the WWS so far, in my opinion. Uh, maybe, maybe. Um, but uh, I'm not gonna take um, that in um, that in um, I think Austin and um, Austin and Hunter at the last pay per view was awfully good too. Agreed. Yeah. Um, what do you think uh, as far as the uh, uh, Austin heel turn? Um, I gotta say the only way they're gonna turn him fully heel in Texas if he comes out and just acts uh, he can't be stone cold. He's gotta do um, do something like come out in a shirt and tie. Um, you know if he if he blows off Texas and says he's moving to Connecticut. Um, really, he just you know if he comes he out drinking a he'll soda, get, he'll get he'll get heat. All he all he has to do is insult Texas and he'll get heat. Yeah. yeah, I don't think they need to worry about Texas so much as just the rest of the country. I mean, if it becomes a deal where he's a big heel all over the country and then he gets here in Texas, it's not going to matter for those two days they're there. Well, I, I think I'm just saying that uh, if he if he uh, tries to turn you know keep turning heel tonight and the fans live don't buy it, I don't think they're going to buy it in a lot of the other places, like when they do SmackDown on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Um, now, they're in Oklahoma on Tuesday. Where's Smack? So Oklahoma, right? Oklahoma City, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, thanks for taking my call, guys. And I've uh, been reading The Observer since 96, Dave, and you do a great job. Thank you very much. I and I couldn't have caught my letters, too, so I'll keep reading. Thanks a lot. Okay, let's go to Dan in Chicago. Dan, what's going on? Hey, guys, what's going on? I saw hey, WrestleMania nice. last night. Uh, I like the Austin heel turn. The... <laughs> I know a way to get Austin over that would, uh, you know, make him a good heel. He could shave the people's eyebrow. Um, that's right. Someone's gonna do that. <laughs> that angle has not been done yet, and uh, the someone's day will gonna come. do that. Uh, and uh, I gotta correct the, you guys. The, 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 the other, the two angles on Rock is shave the eyebrow and and give and uh, do something to his throat where he can't talk for two months. <laughs> no, really, that's awesome. You know, yeah, that's like, yeah, but you know what can't... though? The thing with the Rock is just standing there with a mic in his hand. Yeah, he'll, uh, you know. He'll get just a tremendous ovation. Yeah. Well, I thought that'd speak. be kind of funny, though. <laughs> but uh, I gotta correct you guys on uh, the Bret Hart stuff. They did talk. Uh, Jim Ross did talk about Bret Hart when uh, The Rock had the sharpshooter on Austin. He's like, "This just shades of WrestleMania 13 with Bret Hart." He did say really? that. That's yeah, right. he did because I had right. said it to right. my friend, and then as soon as I said it, Jr. said it. And, 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 and I figured like a lightning bolt would strike him dead too. <laughs> so I decided like you guys know that. You should go back and you're take right, a look at right. that. He, he, he did say it. That's true. Maybe Vince just went insane on the headset. Yeah, I don't know, but uh, I expected Goldberg there. I know you guys think I'm crazy on that one, but I kind of think uh, you got to listen to the show. Yeah, but uh, you think you don't know, you don't think he's going to come on out WWF soon? Um, Soon, yeah. I mean, I mean, if, no. if they if, look, look, if, if if they want him, he will. If they don't want him bad enough, he won't. It's it's in their it's, the ball's in their court, not his. He's going to do the right thing for him. Yeah, the thing is, and, uh, and it's up to them. If they want him bad enough, they'll do the right thing to get him. And if they don't want him bad enough, then he won't be there. Uh, can I make a point about uh, sure. the, the WCW guys there at WrestleMania? I think it was a good idea for them there, but it was kind of funny that the camera guy didn't know where they were at. Did yeah. you kind of notice that? Oh, it was like it was like watching WCW. Yeah, it was so hokey. It was like they had the WCW camera crew there filming that spot. Yeah, like they couldn't, couldn't get a guy up there ready to go for when Shane McMahon introduced them to just be right there yeah. for a close-up shot. Instead, yeah. it's like panning around the crowd. Where the hell are the guys at? It's horrible. And I actually got a, an idea for Stacey Keebler. He, she mm-hmm. could go after Trish and be a part of Vince. And because Vince is going to probably be looking for a new woman. Well, not not at um, not at this point, I don't think, because um, they're trying to keep them separate for a long, long time before they do any interpromotional stuff. 
And, uh, you know, excuse me if this question's been asked, but uh, any news on Hulk Hogan yet, or is that done? Um, I think he's. I think he's really gonna be scrambling. I heard, I, I heard he. Uh, what did he call up Anoki or something? Wants to wrestle Anoki? Yeah, I, I read <laughs> something about that. Yeah. Yeah, he's desperate to get his name out there. You know, Hogan. From what I gather, um, there's nothing going on with Hulk Hogan right now. So. I, mean, I don't know what's gonna happen. To if him, they're gonna he, bring back Bobby Heenan and Gene Okerlund, and they don't bring Hogan back, isn't that? I don't think bringing, they're bringing back Heenan. They're not Oakland. bringing Heenan and Oakland. I, I sensed last night was was pretty much a, a lock that they're not going to bring them back okay. from the way they treated them. I okay. mean, that was just like they portrayed them as you know part of that generation with Blassie and you know kind of like the old the old guys. It's nice to see them once. Now we're never going to see them again, type thing. Okay. What do you think of Sting? You think uh, the Sting are going to come back? I highly doubt it. You don't think so? Because the way he acted on Nitro, that he said nothing's for sure. Don't you know? Don't count me yeah, out. Yeah, because nothing's for nothing's for sure. Because nothing is for sure. But still, hey, if, I if, mean, this if, guy if, he's doing acting. He's making tons of money to not wrestle, and his whole career. Or I can't say his whole career, but the last several years of his career has been built on not working. So mm -hmm. he's not going to want to come back and take a pay cut and go on the road 200 days a year or whatever. It's just why do it? Yeah. Okay, and then my last point. Then I'll let you guys go. Then what's the point of this whole WCW thing? They're not going to have nobody. We're wondering that same like. thing. That's what we're all we're all wondering how this is all going to turn out. It's not turning out. Uh, it's not. Gonna, it looks like it's not turning out so great just yet. No, I mean they're recru recruiting WWF guys. It looked like on SmackDown on Tuesday. So I mean if they're going to do that, bit, then boy, boy, if they end up with like, Billy Gunn over there, then we know it's. <laughs> if Billy Gunn versus Sean Stasiak is on the first show, it's dead. <laughs> for, then in the, it's the first week, and then that's it. Then basically, huh? That'll be it. All right, they guys. Thanks of, for your time. Okay, you're very welcome. They they got a lot of strikes going against them. That they, between the bad time slot and uh, and no marquee wrestlers, I'll tell you the one thing probably that I will miss the most about Nitro and Thunder is your reviews of Nitro and Thunder. That's the truth. More a lot more than the shows. Mm. Brian, it is sad. You know, it really is because you know the reviews. I, I'd say this. The reviews of Raw and SmackDown are nowhere near as entertaining. That's, That's the because truth. there's nowhere near as entertaining. But, you know, things just don't happen on those shows. That's why not, I miss not, Thunder so much. Not with that level. I used to have so much fun writing those Thunder reviews, and now the show's gone. I used to do that. People used to tell me that the best part of the Observer was the reviews of Nitro. This was like two years ago, and then all of a sudden, I just woke up one day and I go, you know, they're going out of business, and I just can't. I just can't be as funny anymore. Because, you know, all that whole time when they were on their way down, I was thinking, this company's going to be around forever. Turner's never going to sell it, so I'll just have fun with this horrible <laughs> product. I mean, it was so horrible. And then when I realized that, you know, all these people are going to be losing jobs, it was just like, oh, it's just all I could do is be sad writing my Nitro reviews after that point. Uh, this is from Brendan, who goes, uh, the crowd chanting, holy shit, after Triple H was choked on that porta pit mat. What's up with that? They were right there. They could see them. That was weird. <laughs> Yeah, You're but you right. know what? A lot of the people, there's 6,000 people in the arena, 55,000 couldn't see where he landed. I mean, when he first went off that thing and he just, like, disappeared, I thought, man, I wonder what he landed on. And they didn't show the replay for a while. Then they showed just a shot of him lying there. And whatever he was lying on, it looked like it was, you know, the cement with carpet over it. I thought, oh, my God, I can't believe this guy took that bump. And, of course, they had to absolutely kill it by showing a replay of him landing on the big trampoline and Actually, it was a porta pit. That's what they call in gymnastics, a porta pit. Yeah. The funniest moment was when Tess was tangled in the ropes. I, I thought it was kind of sad because they had to break <laughs> character, Guerrero and uh, Saturn, to get him out. I mean, it wasn't so much he was caught, but that poor referee was like having a, a heart attack because he and, knew he uh, couldn't open the ropes. And it's like, oh, and then my you have God. Eddie, first, Eddie's punching him, and then Eddie goes, well, I'll just go help him out. Yeah. I was just so funny because he's just going there like, you know, they can't help me because that break character. And we're here at WrestleMania, and I'm going to be remembered as the guy who couldn't get Tess's leg out. <laughs> uh, it, seems, it seems that the Big Show and Kane look the same size. Not the same weight. But, uh, they, well, you know, Kane's got those big lifts in his boots. Um, that's why. Uh, big Show actually is several inches taller than Kane. How old is Kane oh. now? Like 33? Yeah, in that range, I would guess, yeah. Maybe 30, 31, 32, Ross 33. was just talking last night about um, the bright young star Kane and... He may be the future of the WWF, and I was thinking, this guy has been around forever. I didn't realize he wasn't that old when he got the gimmick. Yeah, I hope uh, I hope he's not the future of the WWF. I hope not. Uh, let's see. Um, how long has Brian been wrestling, and what style does he employ? Where can I get a tape of him in action? Uh, tapes are up on the Brian. website, and I think my first match was 
August ninety eight. No, I was watching the I was watching your tape and they said that you're like a eight or eight or ten year veteran. That's wrestling for you. I thought the same thing actually when I was standing in the ring and Ken Hamlin goes, Here's uh Chico's an eight year veteran of the sport and I was looking around going, Where's the other Chico here? Who's he talking about? Eight years. <laughs> the best uh, one was we did the show this weekend and uh I don't know what the hell happened, but the guy we had like a a professional DJ doing the ring introductions. And he introduces me like it's like Chris Alvear, and I didn't even know if I was supposed to come to the ring because I didn't know who Chris Alvear was. I and my music was playing. I just went, oh well, what the hell? Who cares? <laughs> just, well, I got Michael. That Buck is indie here, wrestling so. for you. Yeah. Uh, let's the best see. was the day it was announced at two ninety. <laughs> 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 That's funny. Oh, let's see. Ten ways to get WCW over. Have a WCW wrestler shoot Gilberg on the debut show. Uh, play old tapes of Nitro on TNN. Crucify Eric Bischoff. Huckster vs. Nacho Man. Uh, have Sean Stasiak tape WWF pay-per-views illegally and play them on the show. <laughs> I like that. That's cute. Uh, have have a first 500 fans who come to the arena dressed like a security guard get knocked out by Buff Bagwell contest. <laughs> uh, that's kind of cute. Uh, the winner of the Tough Enough contest becomes a WCW superstar. Now, actually, that one is too likely to happen. Uh, have Shane Helms give David Arquette the vertebraker until David Arquette uh, has to take the move wrong. Uh, use that angle to get David Arquette over as the top face and uh, bring in Vince Russo to be the top face. Yeah, I, I can't blame David Arquette for any of that stuff. Like David no, Arquette nice came to the arena and said, I will not do this match unless I leave as champion. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, David Arquette's a nice guy. It was just their stupidity. And he was embarrassed, too, you know, to, to, to get, take it, because he knew, he, you know, he didn't yeah. deserve it, but whatever. Um, let's see. Just got in from Houston. WrestleMania was awesome. It was not 50-50. Everybody was training for Austin. I went to the Access Saturday night, and it sucked. There were so many people in there, you couldn't move. I talked to Gilbert, who was walking around. He told me he was supposed to be in the Battle Royal, but they took him out because they were afraid people would chant for Goldberg. Well, yeah, there's your answer. There's, that's the story, and that's a, that was a smart move on their part. Um, probably they listened to our show, maybe not. Probably actually, and I think they made the right move. Let's go to Zach in Houston. Zach, what's going on? You guys, okay. that was the worst Motorhead show I've ever seen. They did one song, and the rest of the night was sweaty men groping each other. <laughs> Sounds like every Motorhead concert. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. But in all seriousness, I had a lot hey, of fun. Hey, have you ever listened to Motorhead before? No, I haven't. That was just a joke. Uh, I was just wondering if uh, the, that guy knew the words to the song that he was singing. That I don't know. With heard... me. It was like, this guy doesn't even know the words. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, last night was a good show. The WCW guys actually had worse seats than me. Um, I, I would like to say that the Austin heel turn wasn't lost on everyone in the crowd because there were some, some kids like eight and nine years old sitting by where we were in the second deck, and I thought they were going to start crying. <laughs> mm. Maybe we shouldn't have rubbed it in so much. Y yeah. No, I'm kidding. Well, but um, I do have a couple of things. I'll get to them quickly. Uh, first of all, has the WWF ever really given you all an e explanation as to why... They won't let talent do your show, but they'll let, let them do the law, which you're involved with. Because they don't like me. Ah. <laughs> Is that really why? No, no, not at all. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know. No, I no. Them that, off the I, I know, I, I, it's because the law, the law is also broadcast on radio. And if we were broadcast on radio, I think that they would probably still not let their talent come on the show, but they would have to <laughs> that's a good reason. <laughs> yeah. uh, also... Is Noah going to be showing clips of matches, or are they going to go the All Japan route where they show, like, one long match every week? I think that um, the first week with a one-hour show, I'm, I'm betting they show the whole Akiyama Mori 23-minute match. Now, yeah. as far as for the 30-minute weekly show, I'm guessing they probably will do about three matches, which means they'll probably show, like, eight minutes of, you know, three different matches, as opposed to maybe, like, if it's, a, it's like, a, a big match, they'll show the whole match. Right. But I'm, I'm, guessing, I'm guessing more clips. Uh, also, another quick thing, after last night, I think they need to pack China up and send her away, and I know it's not going to happen. After last night? Well, I've thought that for a long time, but last okay. night was like, 
the the one glaring incident where you you'd have to be blind not to see that she just doesn't belong. Mm-hmm. I, I think that she's not a team player. Yeah, that and, pinfall really did anger me. Yeah, me I too. mean the power bomb. I, I the mean, power bomb. I still would have hated the match, and I would have thought it was horrible. But when she lifted her up, the first thing I thought was, "Oh my God, Ivory's going over." And then she gives her the ultimate warrior press slam. I thought she was going to do the uh, running splash off the ropes. Instead, she just lays on her. And that, I, oh my god, I was but so mad. The other thing also is, is like she, she, okay, she's going over in a squash way, and she still won't even give her any, you know, offense. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I mean, she got hit with a belt. That was it. I mean, she barely even sold that. Yeah. What's she going to have to do? Shoot on her like Rick Steiner, or not shoot, but. Beat her. Uh, I think I, I I think that she's not going to sell for anyone who's not who doesn't have size. Mm-hmm. I really don't. Because she you know because Animal and those guys all sold for her, so she figures that you know she's you know she's like the Ken Shamrock of the women. Yeah. But except 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 it's real. <laughs> <laughs> but it it just bugged the heck out of me that they took two of the least attractive and least talented women they have and put them on the show. And then well, that was off. the story. That was the storyline for China when, when you know, they took her off for the. You know, we should yeah. be thankful they took her off the TV for a long time to build this match. True, <laughs> that's, that's true. true. <laughs> Oops, sorry. But she was doing the she was doing the uh, book signing though. She hadn't been doing that book signing. Yeah. We would have to see her every week doing rehab. Oh God. Yeah. But no, I, we wouldn't because she would have she would have quit selling the rehab <laughs> after like true. the second segment. Yeah. She, she was start doing uh, re- just exercises to plug her video. Yeah. <laughs> you ever seen a, com- a commercial for that exercise video she does? No, I never have. Oh, just seen, I've, just, I've seen the um, I've seen the um, what's it called? The um, print ads for it, but I've never seen a TV commercial. But She's that- doing like bench dips, and I'm thinking that's how she got those triceps. Bench dips. <laughs> no weight, nothing. <laughs> One more thing, and then I will let y'all go because I know this is like the the second biggest show of the year after the WWF acquisition thing, and that is. Uh, oh gosh, I forgot. Now I remember. Forgot. <laughs> when is that DVD coming out with Dave and and Jim Cornette doing commentary? Actually, real soon. Like, <laughs> um, I I just got like a, a note from them. I, I mean, I'm thinking within a month. Great, because I need. I mean, I've got all the WWF DVDs. I've got the one Pride DVD I've found, and. The FMW discs, which are great as long as you leave the American commentary off. Well, this one I don't know so much about. Like the the, the matches are all '80s matches. Yeah. Yes. If, if you like '80s Memphis, you'll like it. If you don't like '80s Memphis, you won't. But Jim Cornette is really, really good. Not, I mean, funny and insightful. I right. was just trying to keep up. I was just trying to keep up with him. He was, he was really, he was really on uh, yeah. for most of those tapes. Well, I will let y'all go. Congratulations, Brian, on finally getting billing. In the ads. Oh. And have Dick Byer on again. Uh, hopefully we will. All right. Have a good right. day. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, let's go to Ed in Texas. Ed, what's going on? Yeah, Dave, I wanted to ask you about uh, Corporal Kirshner. I know he wasn't in the Battle Royal, but I had read something about that he had to try to physically attack Vince McMahon at one time. I don't know. I don't know that story. I mean, it may be true. It was so many years ago. Um, I don't. I don't remember what what got yeah. him bounced from the WWF. Just don't remember. Okay. And also, I wanted to ask you, what's going to happen with the women's division? Are they going to turn China heel so she can fight uh, Lita and Molly, or is it pretty much just dead? I think they're bringing in Victoria. Yeah, I think they're going to bring in Victoria to fight China, and then you know Lita's going to have to wait her turn. Uh-huh. Boy, that's going to be. That's going to be a, an interesting game when the time comes, because, you know, obviously Lita's going to surpass China as a star. She probably already has, but in the pecking order, she hasn't. Uh-huh. And when that time comes, I wonder if uh, how China is going to take, you know, uh, I think she might try top. and uh, sabotage her like she did with the cat and the king. Um, well, we'll know. If something happens to Lita when that time comes, we'll know. It ain't sure. going to happen. She ain't going to get away with it because the cat was totally dispensable. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Lita's not. Yeah. She yeah, tries I think Lita's more play. over than she is now. Lita's more over than she is, and if she tries a power play on Lita, she'll, she, it'll backfire on her. Mm-hmm. That's my prediction. Okay, and one final thing I wanted to ask about uh, Spike Dudley. You had mentioned that you probably wouldn't do the job for what they're paying him to take the bumps that he does. 
And I, was no, just, I, I definitely wouldn't. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> and what I was wondering is, since he's, he came into the WWF as a Dudley, does he automatically get cut into the Dudley profits on the shirts, or does he have to wait till he gets his own shirt? I probably think that he shirt. probably won't get get into the. Uh, I think he probably won't get a, any Dudley merchandise at least for now until maybe in a year. You know, if he's a more you know maybe maybe, but I would think not now. No. Okay. If they do like a Dudley shirt and his face is on it, I'm sure he will. But as far as like the general Dudley's merchandise, I doubt it. Okay. And uh, since the guys like uh, Nova and Chetty, who they've been getting the dark the dark matches, do you think that they're going to go to WWF, or you think they're going to hold them back till WCW? Uh, they're more likely to get into WCW um, because WWF is all full for spots. So um, yeah, I could I could see it, or maybe um, you know I don't know. Yeah, I could I could see him in WCW. I could, well, yeah, I think Nova nice. would be Chet pretty good there in WCW. No, Nova's a hardworking guy. Chetty, I, I, I'm not sold on Chetty. Okay. I, I, I was when he when he first started. I thought that Chetty was really going to be something, and then I, I don't know. I think as he he got out of shape, and it's kind of like in this business now. There's a certain mentality that, I mean, everyone knows, for better or for worse, the rules. Okay. And, and you know, if you don't have enough discipline to, you know, keep... I'm not saying you should look like a bodybuilder, because the guys who do that, unfortunately, do very unhealthy things to get to look like that. But, you know, there's, there's, there's a difference between a bodybuilder and, and, and looking, you know, like just being in shape and, and shetty to show up at, like, a tryout and not in shape. That's kind of something where, from their aspect, from Titan's aspect, they're going to go like... I mean, they'll hold it against them, because that's just the rules of the game right now. Mm-hmm. Okay, and um, you, you were just talking about uh, Jim Cornette and uh, the, those kind of uh, tapes. But I, somebody was telling me that you were involved in, uh, in a match or something in Smoky Mountain with Wade Keller. <laughs> no, what it was was I think Jim Cornette was like having fun one day, and he booked a job or tag team called Dave Meltzer and Wade Keller, but it was not us. Oh, okay. He was I, just I, see, I didn't think so, day. but that was what somebody was telling me. I was like, oh, i got to check that out, as they did. Nah, I never, I never wrestled, never will. Uh, also, maybe, okay. maybe, maybe with Brian. I was watching Brian's tapes, and um, I decided that, like, uh, after watching the first two minutes of Vince McMahon against Shane, that I could do better than Vince if I was working with Brian because <laughs> Brian's actually a pretty good worker. Well, so, that's cool. But, oh, but, you. but I'm, I'm not uh, gonna lay there and take that, uh, that finish. <laughs> <laughs> that's a little too much for me. Okay, the garbage guys, can uh, or the senton? The garbage can. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, I ain't trying it anyway. <laughs> I don't think I'd make it all the way across the ring. And a full bank of calls. Let's go through a couple of these emails here from Andrew in Ontario. Except for a few obvious mistakes, I think the WF production team deserves a huge amount of credit for the show. Last night, they truly made it look like a massive event. Yeah, they made it look like a... a just the, the whole aura show of the year was just so spectacular. And do you think they'll put on more matches like Angle and Benoit to educate the average viewer of that type of mat wrestling? I think it's more up to Angle and Benoit. If they want to do it, they'll do it. And if it, you know, if it gets over, it will. It seemed they were getting decent pops once the audience was clued in what they were doing. Yeah, uh, Kurt Angle so awesome as a wrestler. Uh, what did you think of the bump Helmsley took from the choke slam? Didn't look too cushioned and rather lame. Absolutely. I thought it really <laughs> took away from the match. It really did. Uh, in reply to an email, previous email about the WF pay-per-views in the United Kingdom, I emailed the WF about this. They said it was due in part to the time difference between the USA and the UK, so there's an answer. Uh, so Mike Kennedy, who goes, I'm curious, but you've never answered this. Why has the WF not toured Japan? They toured Japan, I'm thinking about five years ago, and it was a total, pretty much a total flop, and they haven't been back since. And since they can make so much money here, they just really don't think about going to Japan. Japan's got their own culture, their own ideas of wrestling. WWF, not that WWF wouldn't do well there now because it, it absolutely would, but it's like why go why there? Why bother doing it? Why bother doing it because you can make more money here or somewhere else? Uh, do you think that Heenan and Oakland will be part of the WWF from now on? Only on special occasions. Uh, let me see. Uh, do you think that they will do an injury angle with Rock tonight to sell Austin's heel turn and explain Rock's absence? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. But, uh, let's see, the Austin heel turn was horrible. How could they expect the Texas crowd to boom? I don't... Well, actually, I take that back. I know they did expect the, the crowd to boom at the end, and they were sort of trying to tell themselves that the crowd was starting to. Um, <laughs> but I, don't really, I don't know they really were, but, yeah, I know they were sort of trying to say that. I would like you to comment on the really, really obvious blading done by Austin Rock. Yeah, you're right. It was really, really obvious. In fact, um... After the show was over, I was watching the replay, and um, I saw the spot that someone brought up last night 
where, you know, Rock kind of trips and Hebner goes down and it's like, he's just picking this blade up and then just cuts his forehead. I mean, it was, when you actually <laughs> looked for it, it, it was, you know, it was pretty, it was pretty bad. So, so have you seen Randy Orton wrestle? Yes, I and have. And it was bad either way. If you, if you watched him do it, it was bad. And if you just watch him standing there and falling down like a total klutz, that was bad too. Yeah. It says, Shane is hosting w Raw at WF New York. You think he'll be able to send the WCW boys? I was told that their flights were all to go home, not to go to New York. But, um, you know, obviously they can change the flights. But that's what I was told uh, late last night. So that was the plan as of last night was for them not to be on Raw. And I don't think that they will be. Because um, I was told the only mention of WCW on the show tonight would be something that Shane would do. If, if in fact, Shane would do it. Not even like that that was even a given. Okay, anyway, Randy Orton, um, he's an NWA Nashville, and he's the exact same body type as Sean Stasiak. Uh, he doesn't quite have the same body type as Stasiak. Um, he goes, he's already a better worker. Um, I think he's got more potential as a worker. Um, I don't know how his charisma is going to be, but uh, I think Randy Orton, he's, he's certainly got a chance. You know, we talked about him. He's been wrestling for Cornette. Uh, is there any chance that Jim Helwig will appear on Wrestling Observer Live? No. <laughs> no, 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 none. Uh, let's see. Cornette? Yeah, awful... What? On this show? No way. Jim uh, Cornette? No, Jim Helwig. Oh, he said Cornette. No. Uh, let's. No, Jim Cornette was uh, the one who um, Randy Orton works for. Okay. Uh, let's go to Max in New York. Max, what's going on? How you doing, uh, Dave? Yes, um, I'd like to comment on the uh, WrestleMania. Well, I, I'd like to ask you a question about last night's WrestleMania. Uh, what's the, uh, the, the angle with uh, Trish Stratus? Why did she slap McMahon? I think they got, they, they, they had to do something for her to get revenge. I mean, she got real revenge. She slapped him once, and then she did a 50-50 fight with Stephanie. But that's their, she, she got her revenge finally. I think the storyline will probably be that she was the person that, uh, did not give Linda the medication. She didn't give medication Linda her medication. To keep her in the wheelchair. Because they yeah, specifically Linda, asked her, and she goes, oh, of course. Yeah, right. Linda, Linda, Linda and her conspired to, uh, do that finish, but Linda's the one who got the big pop, and, and she, her, her spot was, she was gone by the finish of the match anyway. Right. And um, how many uh, wrestlers are on the roster for WCW, actually? Right wrestlers now? Are on, on yeah. the ro right, right now, they signed 24 guys. The 20, those, those are mostly the cruiserweights, right? Uh, they're yeah. mostly the younger guys with low contracts. They're not all cruiserweights, but a lot of the cruiserweights, yeah. Right. Okay. And uh, sorry, sorry to, I mean, I, this might have been asked already, but uh, has there been any word from uh, Bischoff yet with you guys? And, and regarding what? I, I talked to Bischoff just a couple days ago. Well, what did he say? In regards regarding to what? I mean, he's he's very disappointed that things turned out the way they did. I mean, actually, very dis you know super disappointed. But and what is he doing now? I mean, um, next his next move. Um, I mean, there isn't there is no next. TV doesn't want it. I mean, he there would there would be a next if there was if there could be a next. But he sees the situation in there. I think he's a lot more disappointed that there is no next than he is that that Vince McMahon got WCW because the idea that Vince McMahon could get WCW was always. In, you know, a possibility, and, and he was always planning on starting something up on his own, but realizing that the market will not allow it because no TV stations want it, uh, that was a real bitter blow for, for him, and, and, and it should be for everyone that's Does he see that business. as a short term deal, or is something that, you know, this is the end? Okay. Um, I mean, it's the end for now. I mean, you know, who know, you know, a year from now, who can, who can tell what, what, you know, what's going to happen a year from now? Right, but, I understand. But, um, but for now, it's the end. There's nothing for him, you know, he, he may do something with Matt Rats, but, you know, that's. You know, may, or maybe not, but that, what does that mean? You know, that's just a limited thing. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, two more questions and I'll let you guys go. You guys go. Um, what's the deal with Jerry Lynn and Tajiri and their status with the WWF? Uh, Lynn was a TV, um, over the, or, or Lynn was at the, at, let's see, Tuesday, was, wasn't it? Yeah, he was a TV Tuesday, M Monday and Tuesday, and they just didn't use him. Um, but I mean, he's there. He worked a house show in Baltimore last week, which would have been his first show. Right. And Tajiri has not started working for them. I, you know, I, he maybe he'll be on that WCW team. I don't know. They sure. they haven't. I don't know when. You know, but they've. He's under contract. Okay, good. And one last thing, and I'll let you guys go. Okay, um, Kane. You know, being that he's you know all human, he can talk, he can drive, and do a leg drop off the top of a, you know, the Titan Tron thing. That will they unmask him most likely, like sometime soon. Kind of kill the gimmick. I wouldn't do they it. They unmask him. He has to be deformed. Ugh, and he's, like and he's not that. deformed. And plus, he's going to look like Isaac Yankum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But of course, everyone now. You know what? Though everybody would forget Isaac Yankum. No, I mean I know, but I mean it's it's funny because in in the in the WrestleMania program, I mean they basically say that he's Isaac Yankum. 
Oh, really? I mean, they don't even like, it's not even like it's some secret or anything. <laughs> Wait, Glenn Jacobs? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. All right, well, thank you guys. Um, uh, no, I like your show, and uh, see you guys later. Thank you very much. Let's go to Vince in Georgia. Vince, what's up? Hey, guys, how's it going? Hey, uh, it's going all right. I just wanted to call, uh, get my thoughts on WrestleMania. I know I'm probably going to be in the minority here, but... All this talk of best pay per view of all time and greatness. I mean, I just, I don't, I don't get it. Uh, it was a very good show. It was a strong show in some aspects, but, you know, I, when I judge pay per views, I judge them from, you know, the first match to the last match. And, you know, when you look at the whole card as a, you know, overview, the oh, whole there were, there really were weak matches, no doubt about it. You know, yeah, I mean, out of the 11 matches, five of them, not counting the Battle Royal, you know, range from, you know, par to, you know, not really good, you know. And the other five, like I said, not counting the Battle Royal, you know, there was just a, there was a lot of holes in this show last night. And, you know, I was watching the ben, Benoit angle, and let me just say this up front, you know, I would pay money to watch Benoit wrestle. But I was watching him last night, and this guy has no identity in the WWF. I mean, this week he's a face, a couple weeks ago he was a heel. You know, they've given me no reason to care about this guy. I'm watching this, and the only thing I'm thinking is, you know, not watching the match, but watching what's going on here is, this guy's killing Angle's heat. You know, Angle was the champion. Now he's wrestling him. I mean, I love Benoit as a wrestler, but he has absolutely no identity in the WWF. And I think, you know, they just not have not figured out how to properly push this guy yet. As for the TLC match, these guys have wrestled a bunch of times before, and I know it, you know it, everybody knows it. But this, they should have left that match alone. There was, I just think they clustered it up with Rhino and and Dudley and Re Lita. I was like. We know we've seen these guys a bunch of times. Let th let this be the final climax. Let them have it. Why did they have to cluster it up while adding other people? Rhino was in the match. The only thing he did not do in that match was grab the belt. He was in there just as long as everybody else was, basically. I mean, I love the Austin Rock match. Uh, the turn I, it reminds me too much of the Goldberg turn, in a sense. I hope not. Uh, I mean, for, it's one of the things sake. where, like, a couple years ago, back in 96, when Hogan turned, you knew that was going to work right away. I mean, it, it, it just... It just worked. But you you, hated just, you know, know the differences? Yeah, yeah I mean, just, pe people hated Hogan to begin with, whereas mm -hmm. Austin, nobody hates him, so they got to make people. This yeah. is like a flare turn. They got to make people mm -hmm. go against what they really want to do, and sometimes, you know, like with Goldberg, sometimes it just doesn't work. I know, and that's going to be the tough thing. Your question, my question, everybody's question is how is this going to work? We're going to find out, you know, one way or another, but it's one thing that we know right off the top of the back, it's not going to be easy to do. I enjoy the Triple H Undertaker match. I mean, it's. I mean, it was nice. It was quick few throw together, but you know they worked hard. And you know, and I'll be honest with you, I've been a WCW fan for you know back when it was NWA, and watching Undertaker just you, you sit there and you go, how can you watch Undertaker work his ass off? And then you watch guys like Luger and Nash that are you know pretty much in the same age range and make good money. It just shows you that these veterans can still put on a show, and it just disappoints you when you see a guy like the Undertaker just busting his tail. And I had to suffer through years of Nash and Luger, and it just it makes me sick knowing that you know these guys could have learned something from Undertaker last night. It was just. And as for the well, McMahon, there, there, there's there's your there's you know what there's your difference. That's why Undertaker's still around where he's at, and the other guys are not. That's why the other guys' company's not around anymore because because they had the you know. It was, it was, you know what? I, I don't blame the, the guys as much as I blame the management because if it was good management, they'd have sent him home when they started being a cancer, not after they killed the company. I mean, Nash was never sent home. Luger was sent home a couple of times. I mean, I mean Russo sent him home, and then they brought him back and gave him a bigger push than when he left. So what does that tell you? I mean, every one of the guys there that screwed up in some sense or, or went against the system or whatever it's called, went into business for themselves, I guess is the best term, every one of those guys never really got punished for it and got rewarded. Scott Steiner, what do well, you know, what they do? They gave him the world title. You know, it's like mm -hmm. that that really that really teaches, you know, O'Hare and, and Jindrak and these guys, you know, like uh you know, how to behave, you know, and, and how to you know, you know I mean those poor guys in the WWF, it's gonna be culture shock for them because, you know, they're gonna you know, it's just gonna be so different. You know, when um when those guys got their, their contracts from WWF, you know, or the, they'll notice that their contracts were being picked up, mm -hmm. you know, the first thing they did was they called Nash and go, Kevin, what do we do? It's like, Jesus Christ, this is the guy you're still going to for advice? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? The guy who's yep. not even in the business anymore? But I have, I have Although he's making a lot of money. So I have a question. Whatever. I mean, I know right now we're sort of in the down cycle with wrestling and in this new WCW slot coming up, but I don't know, I just, something just, 
my opinion is I, I just think, and like I said, I am a WCW fan. I just feel they would be better if they just didn't even try with WCW. I just feel they should take the Sean O'Hara's and these other guys, you know, put send them to Memphis or send them to Ohio or wherever, get them ready, and just build them up. Because I'm a huge Sean O'Hara fan. And that was the most exciting thing about the WWF acquiring WCW was finally this guy's probably going to get, you know, could be the next Triple H now. And I just really think they should just don't even try with WCW. Just take the, you know, take these young guys, push them, and then when the time is right, you know, bring back another show. I don't know. I just think right now, as a WCW fan and wrestling fan in general, I just think we have some dark days ahead of us right now. But I appreciate the time, guys. Um, well, we have some dark days as far as lack of competition. That's true. Uh, let's go to Franco. Franco, what's going on? Franco, how you doing, guys? Doing good. Hey. Um, couple, couple of notes. I like that last call. The last call was a good call. I've been sitting here listening to uh, the show. You guys have a great show. Great show last night as well. Um, Thanks. Uh, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm in the. I'm wondering who writes, who writes for the WWF. Who, who are the writers? Uh, because uh, last night's show had uh, WrestleMania one through sixteen written all over it at some point uh you know wrestlemania is is uh once a year and i don't know what you guys think but uh you know you're supposed to have different angles come up and you're supposed to have run-ins and you're supposed to have new faces appear and old faces come back and whatnot i felt they were all so scared uh worried about the, the austin turn that everybody else was sort of just pushed aside and the only thing that mattered, if you would have heard the commentating, you know, Paul Heyman was horrible last night. Horrible. So, so, I, 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 thought he, I thought he was pretty good. You know, I, and I say that because, you know, I, I listen to, to the way that they're putting guys over and putting, you know, different angles over and whatnot. In that final match, they did, you know, uh, what, what, what's his name? Uh, um, Ross? Hay, yeah, Heyman and, 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 uh, and, and, the, and the cowboy there. Uh, they were they went crazy to try to put uh, put this heel over, you know this heel. They needed. They knew they needed that to. That was their job, though, because you know it was well, otherwise. You know, if you just watch that show and you didn't have Jim Ross and and Heyman doing their damnedest to get that guy over, all you would hear is the crowd not buying it. Yeah, but no, it, exactly. And, and you know, like uh, one of the guys right now, believe it or not, that is so over. Is is uh, is William Regal, and they put him out there in the first match. They don't do no prep for it. They don't do nothing. They don't have a run in. They don't have uh, nothing at all. It's just uh, he goes out there. Well, and they, they had enough run ins on the show. Nothing necessarily certainly... wrong with the first match because a lot of times they want the first match to be the one that sets the pace for the entire show. So it's not like, oh my God, who do we want to bury today to put in the first match? It's more like you know who can do a you know a good they, opening they, they match. Want, they, and... Yeah, well. I, I they think, wanted they wanted, I they wanted Eddie, a good match. They, they didn't want to open with like Ivory and China. They stuck them in the middle, you know, because yeah. they knew they wanted it to be kind of hidden. I think Eddie Guerrero, yeah. Eddie, Eddie Guerrero should have gotten that first match with Test because they they their match was a pretty good match actually. And and uh, apart they, they could have done it. The thing going in though is you don't know because I mean if you gave me that card I would automatically say Jericho and Regal is going to be better than Eddie Guerrero and Test. I mean it did turn out yeah. that way I guess, but uh, yeah. that would have been my first thought. Yeah, just a couple of thoughts here. What what's what's the story on um, or what what do you guys think is the story tonight when it comes. Uh, when it comes to Austin, uh, they really, like, the first thing they gotta do, I think, is when the, when the show opens, is they gotta get Austin out there, and Austin's gotta, you know, uh, he's gotta insult, he's gotta insult, he's gotta insult Texas his right mother. Away. He's gotta insult his mother, you know? No, they, just Texas. He, they, he, if he insults his mother, they'll cheer him. They gotta insult him. He's gotta come out with Vince to Vince's music. If they come out with Austin's music, it's all downhill from there. Or, or, or last night, uh, it was, uh, it was Vince that, that sort of went out in the ring and pulled the save on, on, uh, on um, on Austin, I think tonight maybe Vince goes out there and you know how about Triple H having a face turn? You know, I think it's about time well, the guy's that's, job that's, to everybody. That's um that's down the line. I mean, that's at one point that was actually planned for Mania, but I think they wanted to you know they're going to do the Undertaker thing for a little while, and then I think after the Undertaker thing runs its course, I'm presuming he'll go with the face turn. And, and uh, obviously they're building the Triple H in Austin because they did that. They already got that match in the can that Triple H won, so they're ready. Yeah. Okay, thanks very much, guys. Good show. Okay, let's go to uh, Alan. How are you guys doing today? Doing hey. pretty good. All right, I have some questions. I heard something on, uh, I don't know how true it is, you know, for WrestleMania next year, 18, where it's going to be held at, maybe? Uh-huh. Well, not where it's going to be exactly, but what's it, I heard it's going to be in Tampa next year. Is that true or a possibility? 
I don't I don't know. Um, I I think that they've already made plans. I um, but they did not announce anything at the show. Like remember last year they announced the Astrodome pretty far ahead of time. Yeah, they so, announced it last year. Yeah, so I whatever it is, I I think it's probably not locked in stone because if it was, uh, they may have announced it last night. Mm-hmm. Also, I heard with the WCW guys, one of the guys there was uh, Johnny Ace. Is he gonna true be involved? Like, I mean. Nobody, it, nobody knows. Mm-hmm. It's it, it, literally it, these decisions haven't even been made yet. They haven't because of WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. I mean, they bought the company, and they haven't really thought about what they're going to do. A lot of that stuff. The next two weeks, they're going to do a lot of planning on what they're going to do with WCW. Start offering people jobs. Mm-hmm. Start getting writers, office people, the whole bit. Right now, you know, it road agents. Um, I mean, they, they, he very well may get a job, but you know, this, these are decisions that haven't been made yet. Now, if he was going to get a job with the company, I know. I remember, you know, seeing him years ago when I used to follow wrestling in Florida. And I know he's wrestled in Japan for a while. Is he mm-hmm. still, yeah. still, do you think, a good uh, wrestler? Like, do you think he would... Oh, he won't wrestle. Johnny Ace isn't going to wrestle. If he does, he'll be like some sort of a, a booker or a Finnish guy. He's not going to, he's not going to wrestle. I see. Also, um, say, you know, the Goldberg goes to the WCW, you know, down the road, and they, mm-hmm. you know, starts a few at Austin. Do you think that would be, if, I don't know, say he comes in a few months from now, do you think it would be best that they would win the feud to like maybe next WrestleMania, not to rest the feud? Because, I mean, after a while, like for example, you know, you've, we've seen Austin Rock, Triple H, you know, it gets to the point. I, I mean, I mean, the, the, the reality That's a WrestleMania is WrestleMania main event. Yeah, the, the, rea- the reality is that uh, it's, you know, very unlikely he's going to come in, and they're certainly not thinking along those lines that he is. So, I mean, there's no, there's not going to be any plans made for that. I mean, there's just, you know, again, it, it depends on what kind of a buyout that that they get and what kind of, you know. Every, everything's just so up in the air when it comes to Goldberg, but the odd, the odds are he's not going to be coming in. And yeah, yeah, Austin and Austin and Goldberg could draw a lot of money if it's promoted right. It's mm-hmm. a real tricky thing with with Goldberg because they got to make him a killer, or he won't mean anything. But to make him a killer, you're going to upset an awful lot of people that he has to kill. Because if he only kills, you know, guys that are on the bottom, then he hasn't killed anyone. He's going to have to kill, you know, an Undertaker or a Triple H to really make it work. And I don't see WWF booking it that way because it's just, I mean, they could, they could, it's money, and maybe it's their, and, and, and I would, and these I would guys, want to do it. But they need to live with it because there's nowhere else to go. I, I, I could if that's what they, they want to do, up. then uh, I don't think it's going to be something like WCW where guys are just going to complain about it or not come to work or anything like that. They're going to have to do it. They're going to have to do it, but but will they make the call? you got to, you know, will Vince make the call? Mm-hmm. Don't um, you think? I mean, you don't, you don't know he'll make the, you know, you don't know he'll make the call. I mean, there's... You know, a lot of times there are obvious things that they don't do because it doesn't fit into, they don't see it, or it doesn't fit into their ego. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think they need him in, I mean, WC. Right now, the only guy, I mean, maybe one of the top guys that they have is, what, Booger T? They don't even, I don't even know that he's under contract yet, although I'm sure that they'll end up with him. I mean, they need somebody because if you're going to say that, that none of their they guys. Need a lot of guys. They need a lot of guys. With Austin, I mean, down the road, you know, you need somebody, a top guy under contract. You're, you're right. You're absolutely right. I mean, right. The, I the, well, something they got to look at is, you know, okay, say that they want to bring in Goldberg or Booker T or anybody, let's just say Goldberg, you know, it's going to come down to, are, do we want to pay this guy $2 million or are we going to create a company with a bunch of lower card guys that is not going to make it and we'll be out $10 million and what other, whatever other costs that we put into this thing? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, looking at the big picture, the $2 million a year, Maybe an investment and not something that um, I mean it's going to screw up everything and but guys that's, that's the other end, it, but got it's, that it's tight better sal- than losing the company. True, but they've got that tight salary structure and they haven't budged on it yet. What are, what mm-hmm. are some of the? But they haven't had a need to yet because it's not like their company is you know it's not like WWF is going under. I mean right. if they don't get WCW off to a good start, you know why? Why just because it's under WWF ownership is it going to be in a better position? If they're booking it the same way, and if they have even less big stars than WCW had when it was losing sixty million, yeah, yeah, they need. I mean, they need a big talent. And besides, didn't they have like when the Big Show first came to the WWF or Mark Henry? Didn't they have big contracts that they invested in? Yeah, well, Big Show's got a huge contract. Mark Henry's got a good sized contract, and that's why they've tried to get him to quit. That's what I'm saying. Wanna, <laughs> but those guys don't. Those guys don't quit very easy. I think they need at least one or two guys that they. I mean, if McMahon, if it meant giving them that money, and maybe you know. And they could still make a lot of money even if they didn't make as much with merchandise sales. But, and they could wind up making even more than, you know, what they were going to get per year. I mean, it's possible. Well, I mean, McMahon, McMahon can afford anyone he wants. He can pay him anything he wants. So it's just a question of what, what he wants. And, and, it's, and he makes these decisions. You and know, what like, they want, too. 
Well, if they want to do well, it, I think a lot of the story is going to be told after the first couple of weeks of TV. I mean, if that show's doing like a a one or a one five, uh, he may see that two million dollars for Goldberg for some of these other guys is something that maybe he wants to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. One more quick thing: you guys were mentioned about Bischoff. There was a rumor. I mean, it's probably a rumor anyway that on some message boards they were talking about or NWA they wanted to purchase the NWA name or something like that. I guess that's just something ridiculous. Bischoff, made up I don't. I, but but for but this, I mean, why though? But for what's what, what? You know, it's like what? There's no TV. That's the problem. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. I think down the, TV- ro- down the road there'll be another wrestling group. I don't know if how good they would be able to compete with the WWF, WCW, but probably when there's TV, then no. When there's TV, there'll be another wrestling group. Without it's this TV, this thing will you know the lifeblood of this business is the television, and and if you can't get on TV, you can't compete. No matter how, even if you have better talent, you couldn't compete. And it's mm-hmm. going to be pretty hard to have better talent. It's almost there's not enough talent out there to there's not enough talent out there to get better talent. True. All right. Well, it's nice talking to you guys again. You know, keep up the good work with your show. Thanks very much. Thanks. Go to artists in Chicago. Artists. Yo, how you doing, guys? Doing hey. good. Um, my question is, um, I was wondering, I've been, wa- I've been watching the WWF for a long time, and, uh, I was wondering, um, what's going on with the tag team division? Mm, what do you mean? Kind of got Edge and Christian and the Dudleys and the, uh, Hardys still fighting for the top spot. Oh, yeah? Um, yeah. well, I got to definitely go for the, Har- I mean, um, Edge and Christian because I'm from Toronto. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering, um, anywhere down the line, uh, Edge and Christian gonna sometimes get another title shot. They got the belts last night. Oh man, I missed it. I was I just got back from Detroit. Yep, they got the belts oh, yeah, last night in the tables, ladders and chairs match. Oh man, because I um about a week ago I just saw the fanatic series and what their uh, last uh, meeting they did was uh, at No Way Out or something. Mm-hmm. And I really have to commend both of them because I'm, I'm really they're, big fans of them. They're 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 good performers and they're funny as hell. Yeah, and I also love um, man Jeff Hardy. Man, I just respect the things that they've done, and uh, especially um, I was wondering what's going on with Lita. Is she going to continue managing them, or is she going to be doing something else? Just a little, I think a little bit of both. I think she'll be with Matt because they're doing that love interest thing, and then she'll, you know, obviously wrestle singles. And um, I don't know what they'll do if they'll build up her against China, or it doesn't seem like a good matchup right now for 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 either side. It's yeah. Too much trickiness in that. Yeah, but also, um, you know, she'll. She'll wrestle against one of the women and do some sort of a program, I got a feeling. Right. No, Can you imagine China trying to take that uh, diving Frankensteiner off the top rope? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Brutal. Yeah, and I was also wondering what's going to happen to um, Brad Sean from Luke. I, I heard they're one of the top tag teams right now. Um, They are there, you know. I think they're kind of just filling out space right now. I don't think that there's any any real plans for them. They got a gimmick, people kind of pop for them, but there's, there's not a whole hell of a lot they can do with them, you know, so they're just kind of there. We're gonna, we're gonna get going to the, to the um, we're gonna get going, okay? Because we got a lot of calls we gotta get to, okay? Okay, keep doing the work. Okay, let's go to Dave in uh, is it San Diego? Hey Dave, how you doing? Doing good. Yeah, I got a first of all, you got some idiots that are calling, man. I mean that last that last caller was ridiculous. Did you crucial win the belts? Come on. Well, they didn't but, uh, read the newspaper. Anyhow, this do you morning. think anything <laughs> that show last night was uh, as caliber of Brett Austin at the WrestleMania? From a couple years back? No, 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 I, no, 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 nothing was that good. Yeah. There was a lot of great stuff, but no. Yeah, I didn't think so either. I think the card was, like, somewhat overhyped, you know? I, lo- I love the show. Overhyped I mean, I going it- in or overhyped after it was over? Oh, going over. Like, as it was done, everyone was saying it was, okay. like, pay-per-view of the year. I, I, I kind of, I don't know. You know, the, the thing that, that makes it good was there's a lot of, I mean, they there's just, like, a lot of little things they do for WrestleMania that they don't do for other shows. And it kind of like, when WrestleMania doesn't make it, like last year's WrestleMania I thought was a disappointment. You know, it's like it's like a bigger disappointment. But when it does, it almost seems like it's a better thing. But yeah. I, 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 I really liked a lot of those matches a lot. I mean, to me, if you, if you get three great matches on a show, then hell, that's worth it. I mean, I, yeah. I saw many, many pay-per-views where I saw no good matches. <laughs> you know, so. Well, I had an idea, too, to elevate Benoit. Because now mm-hmm. they're doing the whole uh, Austin as a heel thing, or they're going to try to. Mm-hmm. Why not a uh, Ben Benoit that face roll like at one of the next coming up like in your house type pay per views and have a Benoit Austin match? I don't think that's any time in the near future, but I think you know somewhere down the road they might do that. They'll, I mean, they'll do it. They'll do they it. They gotta get Benoit wrong. over as a as a big time baby face first. I mean, it, it kind of worked last night, but everyone just hated Angle. But it's been a while. It's been I guess they started like three or four weeks ago, and it's taken it's taken some time for the fans. Yeah, to but they fall started it. and then they it's turned. It's not something they, they can do right now. 
They, they did, okay, the first turn was totally botched up and stupid. Then they made him a heel on the very next week's TV because they knew they botched up. And then they turned him again. You know what I mean? It's like people yeah. don't know what to make of this. I mean, if, if they put that match like on TV tonight, it would be like Austin is total baby face and Benoit is total heel. Yeah, well, so I think just, they could do something where like Benoit puts the cross face on Vince or something and, you know, I don't Austin know. Austin stomps him. Stomps him, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, thanks for taking my call, guys. Okay, let's go to Marcus. Marcus, what's going on? Hey guys, how's it going? Hey, it's going good. All right, um, I want to know how, how did you did you guys enjoy the Guerrero test match? What about it? I mean, you guys enjoy it? Do you think it was pretty good? It's pretty good. Uh, wouldn't call it good. It was it was it was it was okay. Decent, probably. Decent. It was definitely decent. Yeah. Okay, and uh, real quick, that one of the guys who called earlier, he was like, "This should have been a run-in for the Jericho and uh, Regal match." That match had no need for a run-in. I only ate any no, of especially matches. in the opener. Right. Exactly. I don't think any of those matches had a need for a running except for the TLC match and, of course, the main event, you know, to turn Austin heel or whatever. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much it. All right. Thanks, guys. Okay. Let's go to Abby. Abby, you're up next. Hey. Nice to talk to you guys. Um, I got a question about WCW as far as in general when Vince McMahon is done, like, doing whatever he's doing with it. Is he eventually going to shut it down? I think the inevitability is that that's what's going to happen, yeah. Um I mean, I, I I think it just depends on a lot of different factors, but probably it'll end up being shut down. I mean, if the thing if the thing's successful and it can be successful for five years, I don't see why he would shut it down. But I don't know if uh, it's too know, much stuff for one happen. guy to do. You know, growing up, like before I sort of knew about wrestling behind the scenes and that kind of thing, it was like you always read the magazines and you read all the like dream matches or whatever that would take place, and then ultimately would when you know people would jump ship and go to you know, crossing federations or whatever. But there's also talk of um, people jumping from WWF, like Shane McMahon recruiting people. Is Triple mm -hmm. H going to be one of those people? None of that stuff's been decided, but, I mean, it's certainly a, it's certainly a possibility. Um, do you have an opinion as far as who would be the best talent to take over and promote as far as you know, Rock. somebody that the Rock. WWF hasn't, like, Done well Rock, Rock would be the best guy to go over there for a million different reasons Who because would? he's the only one. He's the only Rock. one. That will, Rock. Okay. He's the only one that will guarantee viewers uh, switch into that show if they can't see him any other place. I mean, even Triple H, if it's the only sh show that they'll see him, he, he's not going to help the ratings that much. Right. I think his two biggest upsides are the fact that a he's a huge star and b he'll do jobs. If they send yeah. Hunter over there and it gets like all political and everything like that, and Hunter's seen as a big star, but you know nobody ever beats him, right? Uh, it'll, it'll just kill it. Does, is, does he really? I'm assuming he has that much clout because of his position, but is there truth to that? And it's not position. It it's, he's, he, it's just he's he knows it's what he's really smart. hard for them to write him out yeah. of the storyline right now, kind of thing. You know what I mean? Well, all that, all this is that uh, it would be hard, but all it is is Shane, Shane signs him under Vince's nose, and 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 that you know what I mean? Right. Right. That's All just right. the way to do it. Um, and ultimately, there is a plan for like the interpromotional pay-per-view type stuff. Oh yeah, but but but, but but not. Oh, oh well, they'll they'll do the interpromotional unless they just can't do anything with it. I mean, if if this thing just flops from day one like an XFL, right. they may never get to an interpromotional day. But the uh, the idea is, the idea is to rebuild it, and when it's really strong, then do the interpromotional. And there's no timetable for this other than. You know, hopefully someday it'll get really strong and they can draw money with the interpromotional. Right. right now, I mean, there's really there's a lot more money in in WWF guys against WWF guys than any WWF guy against this WCW crew. I mean, if there was a Bill Goldberg, it would be different, but there isn't a Bill Goldberg. So, right. one last yeah. question: uh, as far as another promotion starting up that might compete with Vince, do you see Rupert Murdoch and Fox or any of those like people in that direction doing something they, like they, that? They, they, you have to have somebody like that, but it, but. If they were that interested, you know, they had their opportunity a week ago, and they said no, so they're right. obviously not that interested. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, man. I keep up the, you know, like everybody else, that, you know, I'd love this. Talk to you later. Thanks very much. We, we, we appreciate that a lot. We really do. Let's go to Scott in Kentucky. Hey, guys. What's up? Not too much. Hey. Uh, I just uh, tuned in the show a little bit ago, so I don't know exactly what else has been talked about, but uh, have you all heard any rumors where next year's WrestleMania will be at? Mm, nothing. Nothing's for sure. I mean, that yeah, I've heard. Sure. Somebody called in with like Tampa or something like that. Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say. Uh, I have a friend that lives in Tampa, and and everybody down there is carrying on that it's been confirmed. I'm and I'm like, well, I'll believe it whenever I officially hear it. So uh, I will. I will sort of check, but I have a feeling that they won't tell me. 
Uh, <laughs> Maybe they will. Yeah. The, the, I'm trying to remember where exactly it come from. I think somebody from the Tampa area was at WrestleMania last Oh, it was probably Bubba the Love Sponge. <laughs> <laughs> and, he got told uh, by Hogan. <laughs> what, what it was, that's right. They, that they talked to one of the cameramen about it. And oh, if that's the case. He's disposable. Yeah, that's why I didn't. That's I as good as confirmation. <laughs> so I, I told my friend, I said, well, I will believe that whenever I officially hear it straight from the WWF that it will be at the if, Ice if, Palace in Tampa. If it's anyone but, if it's anyone but Teddy Long, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. they don't uh, have good enough sources. When will we see some of the other ECW guys show up in uh, WWF like Jerry Lynn? Uh, Jerry Lynn? He could, potentially Maybe tonight. tonight. I mean... Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I mean, he's he was there. He's you know he was there at TV last week. They just never used him. Yeah, I I, I did hear that he was at Access over the weekend. Is is the Jerry still going to be in WWF? He's got a contract with him. They just haven't started him yet. Do you, do you uh do you uh think that there would be any other ECW stars to possibly show up uh, in WWF? Yeah, probably on the WCW side. I mean, Dreamer will probably show up in the WWF just because I think they feel like. I don't know why, but I think that they that they're going to use him. And then, as far as some of the other guys, I wouldn't be surprised to see some of the smaller guys end up on the on the WCW side when they start the WCW thing going. Do you, do you yeah. figure if they bring Dreamer in, it's going to be definitely him and Raven feuding? Oh God, or no! On down the road. I mean, it's 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 <laughs> like, really it's like a match, but it's like it's a possibility. But as far as doing the Dreamer Raven feud, I just don't see it. I mean, I I, I think the Dreamer in WWF. I could be wrong, but I think that it's not going to be very pleasant because, you know, if without the gimmicks, there's really nothing to Dreamer. You yeah. know, I mean, he, he's not he's not a big guy. In, e, in ECW, he could be a big guy, but in WWF, he can't be a big guy, and he's just you know he's too physically beat up. He's a nice guy, he just yeah. physically can't do it anymore. Yeah. Um, there was something else, and now but oh, now that they own WCW, what are the chances of possibly Lance Storm coming to? WWF maybe he's he, he is he's I mean he's going to be in he's going to be in the WCW side because he has been signed yeah do you, do you think that they maybe might get the Impact players back together no no no, no 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 Lance Storm's going to be in in the WCW company well, and Justin Credible's going to be there I meant him coming to WWF on Raw no no they're not they, they have no talent on the WCW side they're not going to let yeah, someone I, I, like know, that kinda, go to the WWF side yet I mean I not you know blame it. A, a year from now possibly but it's not happening now but uh. Do you, you think do you possibly may see Lance Storm becoming heavyweight champion sometime on down the road, WCW? Uh, most likely, I would say no, but you don't know 100%. It's it's like they been, pushed him awful, you know, awful quick or awful hard whenever he first came in, and now he's just right. Of, but that was a different that was a different management, and they yeah, had different no, ideas. Yeah, no doubt. You know, you got yeah. it's, it's like it's like you got to figure out how would you know the guys were going to make the call. The fact is is. Not, I mean, ultimately the call, of course, is Vince. All right, mm -hmm. but the guys who are going to make the call, which would be the writers and the bookers, have not even been hired. So for me, you're trying to ask someone to think of how someone's going to think that hasn't even been hired yet. It's really hard. Like if if yeah. it was like Johnny Ace and uh, Arn Anderson, I could at least think, okay, what would Johnny Ace and Arn Anderson be like? But they haven't even been hired yet. So it's like there's so many steps away that to predict who w who and what they're going to do what with. It's just so premature. It's not really. It's really. You really can't do it intelligently. Mm -hmm. I, back on the Tampa subject. I, after them having sixty, uh, almost sixty-eight thousand people in the Astrodome last night, I just don't understand why they would want to have WrestleMania at a venue that only holds around twenty thousand people. They've done it before. Uh, yeah, I most mean, year, most years they do. Now that wrestling's even, you know, more popular than ever. I just well, don't understand not. why they would want to Wrestling have it. Wrestling was more popular than ever about two years ago. It's on its way down. Well, yeah. I, guess La I mean, last night Last night was probably the defining moment of this boom because, you know, the, it was the big crowd and the biggest gate in history, but in, in American history, not world history. Uh, but um, as far as, you know, I, 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 I don't know. It's... You don't know where the business is going to be in a year. Yeah, that, that's and true. and you book a, a sixty thousand seat. Now WrestleMania, I think, will always draw because it's got that history behind it. Mm -hmm. But then again, then again, yeah, look at it, if things are going down. I don't know if they can pack another sixty-seven thousand or sixty-five. If things are down, they can't. No, look look at you know look at Starcade. What did they they the pay to Starcade was what thirty-six hundred or something at the DC. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> you know when you're cold, you know when you're cold, you 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 can't sell tickets, it's and when you're hot. When you're hot, you know, you can sell tons. What can you say? Yeah, I, I remember a few years back when they had Starcade down in Nashville. I went to that one, and 
it was, you know, I was at the municipal auditorium, and it was pretty packed, and it most definitely went downhill over the years. Well, the, the the Hogan, I think it was the Hogan Piper Starcade. Yes, that was but it. One, okay, that was like their first big sellout because I remember I was actually reading back old observers and and that Starcade people in WCW they had had like this period where the business was really really down, and then that that match like ushered it in and they had their first sellout in a long time and there were people in the company that were taking pictures outside of the sign that said sellout. Oh, that's right, of the sellout sign. Of the sellout sign because it had been so many years since they had sold out like a real, you know, like that Nashville Auditorium is like 9,000 seats or yeah. whatever it is. It's not yeah. even a big building. But they had, had, had been so long since they had sold out a building of that size that it was like, and it's funny because they went from, they went from that, you know, never selling out to like taking pictures of sellout to, um, you know, selling like out the Georgia or Dome. 17 like, in a row or whatever it was. Oh, it was like, like 20 something in a row. And then they and went back down to where, you know, they were, you know, back to where they started. Yeah, it, it was pretty amazing because, I mean, there was people lined way on down the streets of Nashville waiting in line. And I believe, matter of fact, A&E was working on a biography at the time because they had a camera mm -hmm. uh, asking people questions. And I believe I remember seeing one of the A&E documentaries, and it was uh, a lot of footage from the uh, Nashville Starcade. Yeah, we we got we got to get running. We're the we're... champions won. I can't remember because the very last clash of the champions was in Nashville. Yeah, we've got to get running. We're totally out of time. Okay, we're actually well, overtime now. Okay. Uh, you guys, you have good work, and I appreciate uh, answering all my questions. Okay, you're very welcome. I want to thank everyone for calling in, and uh, Brian and I will be on here tomorrow. We're going to have Tom Zink here tomorrow, so we're going to have a lot of fun. We'll be talking about Raw and talking about uh, anything else that you guys want to talk about when it comes to wrestling. We'll see you tomorrow at 5.